name. Might, yep. And then this again is for the new whatever, whatever he is. Okay, put it behind. <laughs> yeah, I have, well, we're live, so. Don't say anything. Well, I know she'll just move the microphone closer she, to yeah. the <laughs> I don't like yeah. it. Okay. Everybody ready? Sure. All right. We, oh, wait. Is it different? Do I have to? Oh, dang it. Linda. Okay. Call to order the Camden R3 Board of Education meeting, regular session in the Administrative Office Boardroom on Tuesday, March 12, 2024. What? It's a Thursday. That's March. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's in the packet for later. Okay. Okay, never mind. Um, we will be today, Thursday, April 11, 2024, in the Administration Office Boardroom. The meeting is called to order, and we will say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Yeah, that's not... Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then a motion to approve regular session minutes and documentation to March 12, 2024, and the special session minutes of March 21st, 2024, as submitted. So moved. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we will certify the April 2nd, 2024 election results. Do I do that? O official results from the April. Second, 2024 municipal election were reviewed from Camden, Morgan, and Laclede counties. Do we have a motion to certify the election results of April 2nd, 2024 as presented? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I think. And then we, do we have a motion to move the meeting to adjourn? Sorry. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so before we go anywhere, just um, quickly uh, want to recognize Mrs. Uh, Griswold. Um, years on the board, um, during her time, some some definite highlights would be uh, things that she was able to work with the board and the district to accomplish. Some things that I think will have a lasting legacy on our school district. Um, the highest raise uh, for certified staff in the history of our school district. The highest raises for classified staff in the history of our school district. The addition of three um, school resource officers designed to keep our kids safe. Something that those things were all uh, near and dear to uh, Mrs. Griswold's heart. Um, we do have a card for her that we tried to hide from her, but like everything else, um, she saw through that and, <laughs> and, caught, and caught that too. So and we also have a gift it. for her that we're going to have you. <laughs> Uh, I, I was joking. You can either <laughs> open here or open someplace else. It's up to you. I'll open someplace else. No, it's, but, I, no, yeah, no. So no, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Yep. Paul thank you. Thank you very much. And I just want to say um, welcome to Michael Goolidge to the board. And um, I know you'll be well supported. So just appreciate my time here and, you know, try not to get too sappy, but. <laughs> Good, good luck. <laughs> this is like. Thank you. Thanks, Cal. Thank you. Don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> you get the board for 15 minutes, right? Is it only 15? Because I was playing on like. <laughs> Now we'll dissolve the board and appoint the superintendent as chairman. So uh, that's the part where I have to take over the meeting and reorganize. Um, and then we'll need to have our new members come forward for, no, I'm sorry. You need to make a motion to dissolve it. Yeah, I can't do that. So you got to make a motion to dissolve it. <laughs> Move to dissolve the board and appoint superintendent Sean Kirksey as the chairman. Second. Okay. Um, so new returning board members need to come forward and we will administer the oath. I think we're all in favor. Love that one. Yeah. Aye. 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 So Aye. We had to vote on that. 
Just all in favor. Match. I don't think it's Yeah. Yes. So far, aye. Aye. so far you're killing us. <laughs> 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 Linda's, Linda's going to come and help. The, so we need Michael and Brian, returning board members. So I take the oath. Like to nominate nominate Troy Reisner for president. Second. Second. Any other nominations? I'd like to nominate Eric Walters. We have a second. Second. I guess I'm going to say this before, and I know we're going to slide to the Faster than any like, discussion we want to have, I mean. Yeah, if you want to have discussion. I mean, I personally am okay with anybody, so. But I don't know if anybody had anything else they wanted to kind of add. All right, I guess not. I'm perfectly good with everybody, so. This time you would uh, typically, if you, it's hard to consider both nominations simultaneously. Um, so, uh, if the first nomination were to receive significant votes to be elected, I think then that eliminates the second nomination. I think is how that would work, unless there's something I'm missing. Well, when we've got our two shooters, we've got two nominations. Mm -hmm. case when we consider candidate one. Candidate one will be Mr. Reisner. Candidate two will be Mr. Walters. Um, so then we'll do a show in for each one. We will tally those and uh, just need to remind you, you can only vote once. That would be a little bit awkward if we had seven, seven times for both of them. That would be awkward. So um, at this point, um, 
by show of hands. Would you raise your hand voting for candidate one, Mr. Reisner? So that there are five votes for that. Okay. And votes for candidate two, Mr. Walters. So by a vote of the board, the president uh, is Mr. Troy Reisner. Thank you. Thank you. Nominations for vice president. You take over. I think you take over. No, not yet. Not yet. Until after you do the vice president. Uh, I'd like to nominate Callie Hensey. Got a nomination for Callie Hensey. Is there a second? Second. Any other nominations? With no other nominations, that's acclamation right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Motion to the nomination cease. Do you have any others? Make a motion for ceasing nominations. So moved. Second? Second. So that makes Callie vice president. And now we need to vote on that. Too. So all in favor of uh, Callie Hensey for vice president, say aye. All right. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Now we can, if you want to, you should kind of shuffle seats um, or you stay Michael in the seat just you're in. Seats. Actually, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Yeah. Other person. I think <laughs> just for what just happened here. Camera yeah. angle is always it's better. Not. Yeah. Troy right in the middle. And well, and everybody can hear. I appreciate it. It's, yeah, that's it's fine for me. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to so that way. He didn't so. have to log out. <laughs> Okay, so we can move forward with uh, officer, officer positions, and uh, so we're going to call for nominations for treasurer. Do we have a, um, a motion to nominate someone for treasurer? Motion to nominate Jacob Nucci. Second. Second. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Third. Okay. Do we have any other any other motions for uh, treasurer? Okay. Um, so we need to move to uh, the nom nomination cease, and we elect uh, Jacob Nushi as treasurer by acclamation. So do we, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Congratulations, Jacob. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on and going to uh, nominate any nominations for secretary of the board. Um, I'd like to nominate Shelley Creed. Second. Okay. Any more nominations to go for consideration? I should make it this easy. Uh, all right, so we need to move to uh, nominate Shelley Creed as secretary of the board. Do we have um, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, congratulations, Shelley. Oh, hi. Okay. Do you want to? So oh, you I guys, can. that way. Oh, yeah, you, you, you mean my we, mama? We, we, we Maybe next meeting. Still shuffling here. We, we, <laughs> yes, we, we probably should have it before. We can do that executive yeah. session. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shelly's already <laughs> nested. She's, already, she's, yeah. she's I, settled I, over there. <laughs> but executive session, yeah, that's when that makes sense. Or sure, whenever. It's, it's fine. All right, so. Um, and of course, we uh, would love to add a, a motion to reappoint uh, Ms. Linda Liu as our secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Linda. Or, or amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have a motion to appoint uh, our MSBA delegate and alternative? Actually, we don't need a we just, Yeah, it's not really a motion, so. I would be happy to serve as the MSBA delegate. Anyone else? 
Is like that a the, nomination? The nom I can't nominate myself. Yeah. I'll nominate, nominate you. Or okay. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> and who would we, uh, I would like to serve as our MSBA alternate. I go. I'd be more than happy to yeah. do it. I mean, I nominate Eric. He went to the last couple meetings. Okay. Perfect. I'll second. Okay. I have a right. motion to approve the delegate and alternate as selected. Do we have a second? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that's it. Thanks, everybody. All right. She's over there, jabber, jabber. If you have any puns signed up, okay. No problem. Okay, uh, consent item number six, we have our consent items. Now, we did talk about a, f a couple of these in our work session. Did anyone else have any other questions or concerns with, uh, looks like we have our William Woods. You want to briefly just say what that yeah, is for you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, so this is a new partnership agreement with William Woods University. Uh, they are under new leadership as, um, and they kind of reached out to us. The president of the university reached out to us and really they're just trying to have more of a presence and help out with uh, local schools. Uh, William Woods University is out of Fayette, Missouri. And they are just wanting to provide assistance on a needed basis. So if we wanted to reach out to them and to their faculty uh, to have some professional learning opportunities that they can present to our, our staff, as well as a partnership where we can go and do recruitment events uh, at William Woods, we can do that with or without this agreement, but it kind of puts that into our court. Then it comes with financial advantages to our staff and to their families. So if they were going to do a residential for any kind of employee or a family member of an employee, they get 65% off of the tuition rates from everything from a bachelor's to the doctorate program, as long as it's residential, meaning on campus. Um, Our campus. On their campus. Their campus. Yep. Okay. Now, if it's a virtual or an online option, that drops down to about 25% of a discounted rate, but it still opens up a financial advantage and the benefits. We could still provide um, the recruitment opportunities to go to their district. All we are having to do, it's non-exclusive, but we have to just be able to have access to those information for William Woods University to our staff and to our students. So whether that be sending out through flyers or just having them set up in our high school cafeterias and talk to our kids, uh, something that we would do anyway. So it's just, a, again, it's a way to entice um, their involvement with local schools and kind of get back a little bit and get their name out there. So, so it wouldn't be an exclusive setup. It'd be like during a college fair. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and we can visit with any other schools. We, you know, it's a non-exclusive okay. uh, agreement. And doesn't have anything to do with teaching courses online, like no. for teachers. No, nope, nothing. I don't either. mean online on camp our campus. No, it does not bring teachers from uh, William Woods onto our campus. Um, all it does is just open up opportunities for us to have a dialogue with them possibly provide some professional development. This is an agreement that will be reviewed on an annual basis and we can cancel it any time. Thank you. We have a lot of staff uh, using William Woods to get their We do have masters. quite a few staff working towards any higher degree, whether it be their master specialist and even to their doctorate. Uh, William Woods is one of those uh, cohort models and so it's more of the virtual learning that we're seeing, but um, yes, it is one of the top five that uh, our staff are using currently. Might as well save them some money. Right. Mm -hmm. It was in Fulton, I think. Fulton, thank you. Yeah, I said. Yeah, I sent my kids there for mm -hmm. college for kids uh, oh, way yeah. back in the day. To yeah. Fulton? Mm -hmm. Well, oh. not, not, <laughs> not, not the other side of town. No. Some days, though. <laughs> That'd be interesting. <laughs> That's a field trip. Uh, the budget amendments in the consent, uh, we didn't really talk about those. Are they fairly budget, at least budget neutral? Just yes, they all are. Moving. Yeah. Yeah. Changing phones. Small dollar amounts. That's what I thought, yeah. Okay, I'm good with that. And then the MOU is just a renewal. Uh, there's no change SROs. to that. No changes no change. with our dates. Yeah, the dates. Dates. Okay. We have a motion? I will point out, Shelly, if you don't mind, just because you mentioned it, that the dollar figures with the MOUs with the SROs is dependent upon their salary structures, and we will not have that yet. But the MOU itself is identical, minus the dates, as if we are currently at. Thank you. I make a motion to approve consent items as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. All right. Uh, approval of bills. Do you guys have any questions or concerns with the bills? 
talking about the bike trail, so we just paid for some security cameras <laughs> more at OBE. <laughs> <get it. laughs> yeah. Point them out. I mean, we we do have cameras on the outside of the building, back by the pl place preschool. Yeah, anyway. I don't know if they would encompass the, but that's one of the things I want to check on. If we would have coverage there, we could see that. Where Is that the like SRO is looking at the sensory automation? Yeah. Out of the ordinary out there that also covers that side parking lot. We also, I mean, one of the just general concerns, logistically, not safety, is just if that thing really fills up every big event, are they going to fill up our parking lot where our parents right. can't park there? <laughs> But we're we're here to approve the uh, 21st century for OBE anyway right now. So. Is it within the? Is that the same as their bid? What's what were the 21st century automation? Yeah, that's part of it's not. It's not but it's not within, totally within, within that part's within yeah. their bid. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We we sent a contract so the price is firm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's set. Okay. Unless we make changes, we're not paying any. Replacing the score scoreboards in the high school gym, going as planned. I think a little slower than we had hoped, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's a little behind schedule just yeah. because it was a long, it was a wait. You know, everything with logistics and, yeah. and the supply chain stuff, and then we had. Did they uh, ever get the uh, camera? They've been good to, to get it up and running, and, and so we will be having a reveal that you'll all be invited to when we get those up and running, and also our um, platinum and gold sponsors that you know. If you remember, like to be clear for everybody, we have two really nice video boards in the high school now gymnasium and those are the byproduct of our local supporters that, that uh, are, are uh, platinum and uh, gold level partners from our community that donate money to, to see that happen and, and uh, so that is over over a five year span but that will be entirely completely funded and then some by that group so that is not a, a real school expense so some generous donations do we get any grant money to connect the fiber to the admin and high school building yeah I think Adam's run some of that three rate. It's our money. money. Yeah, we get a discount on that. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions on the uh, approval of bills? Move to approve all bills as submitted. Second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. On to the uh, treasury report. Do you want to chat about that one for a second? Yeah. I mean, both for March and the year, uh, we would show that our expenditures are up. But our receipts are up even more, so so that's a positive. Uh, one thing on the that is mentioned in the summary is that our federal revenues are up nine hundred thousand. Well, it's kind of deceptive because you know we've got almost one point two million in that extra money. So if it wasn't for that, our federal revenues would really be down. So that's kind of something to, to keep in mind there. I talked about earlier about our self-insured medical account. Uh, no claims at all this past month coming through that. And we got a few more rebates, and of course we got the interest that was drawn on the account monthly. So it's up to 1.6 million, where it started at 1.9. I think so. That puts an overall spend, district spend from that account, about 290,000 for the year, which is really good. I mean, I, they did really good. In hindsight, they did a really good job of, of pushing and get as many claims as possible paid before that before that July 1 date. So that's that's really good. Uh, one, one thing, kind of, it's not in your summary, but I just thought we should share with you, if, if Sean may have already, about the FEMA project and working with them. Have you shared the new, new? So, like, originally we was approved for a 4,000 square foot building, but we really didn't have, we didn't really think that size building worked. We really thought a 6,500 square foot building would work better. And we were free to build that style of building, but you were only going to get the 75% the of a 4,000 square foot building. So, you know, looking at that, it, had we went and, and we did a, a 6,500 square foot building instead of the four, you know, roughly that would be uh, a $2.9 million project and they would give us uh, one point, uh, 1.5, so, you know, the, uh, sorry, it would be a $2,925,000 $2, project. And as, as it was originally, we would only have gotten, we would have had to pay about 500000 But now they're actually going to, they, they just told us the other day that they reached back out to SEMA and there's more money available, so they're going to pay 
75 percent of the 6,500 square foot building. So that that is a huge get for us. That makes that bigger building uh, a lot cheaper for us. So that was really so good. What, what you should expect from us in, in uh, the, the weeks and months to come is there. Again, this is nothing's final till till we get the funds cleared to do it. Um, but we, we talked to them about potential sites for that, places um, for that. We looked at our long, long range uh, facilities plan. Um, and so what we are, what we're having them put together a floor plan for us to present to you at this point is an early childhood center that would be really close to Dogwood uh, Elementary School. That's the 6,500 square feet would, it would encompass and be fit FEMA requirements for the, the occupants of that building, not the community the occupants of that building, all of our staff and potential visitors uh, could be safely housed within that FEMA shelter. Um, our early childhood center has been on our long range facilities plan for years, we can tell 25 years. It just hasn't happened yet. Um, and so uh, we feel like there are some potential sites for that. The 4,000 square feet facility really didn't do us any good other than just to have a square box, you know, to put, uh, to put uh, students and staff in, which would be, be safe, it'd be good. But it wouldn't be a daily, everyday use kind of thing. So we're looking at what they're going to draw those plans up and had conversations with um, uh, Dogwood uh, just about what that looks like. We looked at our current early childhood classrooms, and so that will be classrooms in addition. Um, probably at 6,500 square feet, it may not house our entire early childhood program because uh, we'll need a little bit more space on that. You know, those have a bathroom in every classroom um, because if you, you know, um, we've got three and four year olds, you, you don't. You it's not like high school where you give them a hall pass. You know, it's a little different. So they'll have bathrooms in their classroom and some other facilities. We're continuing to talk about that. Our architects will be looking at that. There's nothing to show you from a plan standpoint, so it's a little bit premature to have that conversation with you. If there's anything in that plan, we'll go through that with you. If you don't like the plan and you don't like the idea, we don't have to do it. Um, it's just we needed to get that in there so they could have that. Because that extra allotment of money from SEMA was going, going fast. So they were encouraging us to get it in there and see if we get this extra money. And that extra money ended up being uh, well over a million dollars extra that we would get out of that. So um, uh, that also was very nice to, to almost fully fund that 75% of that project, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, but a lot more on that to come. Did you have like a location in mind, like behind um, Dogwood? There were three potential sites. Um, one was behind. Dogwood in the in the, the grass field back there. Um, just looking at that structurally, for me personally, that's fill. It's fill that's been there a long time, but that's fill. You're, they're not going to hit solid ground. Um, so we were a little concerned about FEMA buildings have, uh, they go, I mean, their, their footings are about five by five. They go down really deep and they go really wide because they have to be, because they have to be anchored to that to withstand tornado uh, force winds. So um, we were a little concerned to put that on there and just, uh, the flow of that compared to where early childhood is in our building already, that would be an odd, it'd be off of second, first and second grade, where really, if you put it on this end or the other end, you'd be right off of potentially early childhood classrooms that already have bathrooms. So if we want to go, if we have eight early childhood classrooms, we can't put all eight in the 6,500 square foot building, we would want them close to the other two or three that we might have to leave in the original building. And so those are, those classrooms are at either end of this wing. The problem with right here is, um, you can see right now what the problem is, because there's cars parked everywhere right there, and that's exactly the way it looks at the end of school. So to try and build something at the very core of our, our district main campus would be really, really hard infrastructure-wise. And, and uh, we can tell with Dogwood, that's not a great, uh, with the Dogwood um, Festival and Carnival, that creates a, a totally different path around here, which is not, not great, but that's one week out of the year. This would be longer than that when we were building a project. So what we uh, consider probably is the best place. And again, this is this will be up to you. We will just present this to you uh, in much more detail. But where we told them to start looking at drawings and ability was on the other end of, of the campus, closest to um, what would be Blood Settles over there and then on the other side of, of Dogwood, which would be more like the, what we call the west or the north north end of, of campus over there where there's two parking lots already. Um, and uh, um, it will we'll need to, along with that, enhance some of the playgrounds over there um, to, to adjust some of those to be, uh, so we won't lose any playground space the way they draw it up, um, other than that basketball court right there, um, which is important for our early childhood with the ride to tricycles and stuff like that. So we'll need to, um, we could potentially, um, 
uh, lose some parking spots over there in that area, but we feel like if we adjust the playground a little bit, we will not. Um, and we will want to pull that, during construction, we'll want to pull that playground away from that area anyway. Um, so um, again, these are slow. Any school building is a slow process. FEMA is even more so. There's still a lot of paperwork for them to go through. The folks that we have submitting those grants for us and to get final approval takes a lot. So we're just now starting that process. So any questions about that? I don't want to go into that much detail. Really, we really don't know as much, but that, that gives you at least a, 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 a little bit of a forecast of where we might go with that. So. Yeah. Exciting. Thank you. We had lots of plans for the facility, but then when you get to it's 6,500 square feet. That changed a lot of stuff. You know, it, it kind of locked us into where it would be. Nice. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion to approve the uh, treasury report <coughs> as was submitted. So Se moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. All right. Uh, on to new business uh, high school parking lot recognition. So, so longtime partner with the school district, um, you know that uh, we, we just do, uh, Mr. Hall has presented to you and, and working with Dr. Piper and how we continue to bring our asphalt and our paving around our campus up to speed. And so Mr. Mark Haas here with Main Street Asphalt, they were our partners for that this summer and are kind of our, uh, a partner that we've looked at moving forward to be somebody that um, uh, has served the, the district well and, and, and gives us competitive bids that and obviously this kind of speaks to the quality of the work, so I'll let Mark take it away from there. Thank you, Sean. Good evening, and Hi. I want to say first thanks again last year for partnering with us on this project. Um, we are new members to the Missouri Asphalt Pavement Association. We're a small contractor here in Missouri or mid-Missouri. We've been in business for 25 years. The Camden High School project was a project that we elected to put in it. You know, they have a, they do a showcase of jobs every year for contractors. Um, it's, it's, it's a big group of contractors, mainly made up of highway contractors. We're, we're a smaller maintenance contractor, but obviously you can see our work stood out. Um, you know, we worked with Gary, uh, your maintenance superintendent on this project, and, uh, you know, the project just turned out great. When we submitted it, they actually come down, they look at the project, look at the quality of work, you know, we described the job and, you know, everything we've done there, you know, they were really proud of it, obviously. Second place, we'll take it because the, the company that we lost, or, you know, first place was a seven-mile maintenance project on a, a road <laughs> up in St. Louis, so <laughs> we'll take that. But I just want to again say thank you. I want to present this to, I'll to present it to the board president here and the, the board um, and Gary. Appreciate your maintenance superintendent, I think he's going to be thrilled about it because I think last year he was That's really awesome. adamant about trying to get back on a maintenance program. We've we've worked for a school probably for 25 years all the way back to Ron Hendricks. I remember being in this room 25 years ago with Ron Hendricks <laughs> talking about asphalt maintenance and I'm proud we got a good group of employees and we're, we're honored to serve you guys. So I want to leave this poster and I'm sure this will probably make it down to Gary's office. If not, we'll have another one. <laughs> <laughs> You want to turn around again, and show the, show the again, crowd? Thank you. Yeah, it's it's we're very proud of your work. This is your guys' high school parking lot. Oh, yeah. Where you ought to get up there with the plaque? <laughs> you want to hold the plaque? Yeah. Well, yeah. get Troy up there. I'm just trying Sean, to Sean, you want to take the pull the plaque? Yeah, there you go. Get another picture yeah. with the plaque. Grab that. Get one more. Questions. I'm sure you know you can get them to Sean, and I think we're looking at Gary's and Sean both asked us about another maintenance project this year, so we're currently working with Gary on that. So I'm sure I'll have some numbers to you soon, and yeah. look forward to doing business with you again. You do a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right, so uh, we move on to the uh, name the LCTC Agriculture Building. So, uh, uh, Mr. Stanford, Colin Stanford here and some of our other uh, ag kids are here. Colin approached me um, 
a little while ago about the possibility of talking about our agricultural building. Um, and I will, he asked to do this presentation, and I uh, am 100% uh, in support of him in this process. So I'll just turn it over to him. He can obviously speak for himself. Hi, guys. My name is Colin Stamper, and I'm the current president of the LCTC FFA chapter. And with me tonight are some of my fellow uh, chapter members, Izzy Hammer and Kirsten Wright. Um, today I come before you proposing to rename the current Agriculture Center to the Jeff Kitchen Ag Agriculture Center. Mr. Kitchen first started at, the, first started at Camden teaching agriculture in 1993, at the time only teaching two classes to juniors and seniors. For the first 13 years, Mr. Kitchen was the only teacher at the Agriculture Center. Seeing the need, Mr. Kitchen was the voice that advocated to the Board, to the board of Education to expand the program because it was bursting, the class numbers were uh, bursting and uh, with enrollment and there was a high community and student interest in uh, animal science. Um, in 2006, the board agreed to expand the program and add an animal science teacher. Um, this didn't just expand the class numbers, it expanded the opportunities and experiences for students in the agriculture program. I believe that naming the Ag Building after Mr. Kitchen would not only help honor what he has done for the agriculture program, but what he has done for, as a Camden community member and a lifelong ag advocate for, the ag for agriculture education. Former community members and staff have been honored for their contributions to the school, such as R.C. Worthen Auditorium, Bob Shore Football Stadium, and C.C. and Dorothy Blair uh, Library. At this time, my request on behalf of the LCTC staff administration and students, both past and present, is that you would allow the LCTC Ag Building to be formally named the Jeff Kitchen Agriculture Center. Thank you for your consideration in honoring Mr. Kitchen and his 29 years of service to our district. Thank you. Great. Very well done. Do we need a, do we need a motion? Um, if, you're, if you would like us to do uh, more research into that, we can do that. You can make a motion now. We can um, see what that would look like. If we look at possible signage we would put up to show you what that would look like, you could approve it at that time, or you could prove it now and just give us. Um, obviously, uh, I, I've worked with uh, Mr. President. Kitchen for a long time, <laughs> and, and he, kinda, he truly is the father of our ag program. He created it and has given uh, a ton back to the school district and continues to give. Uh, he, he's still back at the school. Um, and still helping kids, so, uh, and I would just put it in, put, put the ball in your court there, I'll do whatever you need me to do to, to help with this process. Well, I think we can, I think we can approve, approve it now, this. I'm 100% on board. Yeah. Do we have a motion for that? Uh, I actually will make a motion to rename the agriculture building. To the Jeffrey Kitchen Agriculture Center. Perfect. What he said. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Oh, sorry. Oh, second. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'm going to step out. Because sure. Scout is um, in JHS, and I'm just going to run up there real oh, sure. fast. I'm gonna just going to run up to the little theater real fast. For a little so. Hey, Kevin. We already talked about this. You know how I am. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> Blair is hanging out in the car. If she wants to just hang out in there with her, that's fine. No, she's not done. It's the oh, induction. Okay. So oh, it started at six. I was just going to run up there. Oh, okay, okay. I'll that's be fine. back though. Yeah, thank you. Great, Troy. Oh no, that's what we did. We skipped over that first comment. No, we didn't. I asked her if she was any, anyone signed up for public comment. No, oh, she said no one did, unless I missed that. I did. Didn't hear you. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, just to let you know that, uh, yeah, Callie's going to go watch her, her kid at the Junior National Honor Society at the Little Theater. So, she'll be back. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's move on to item C and new business, which is our consideration of the PINMAC proposal. Yeah, I'm going to kind of jump through a few things real quick. I know we talked about it very briefly during the work session. I have pulled up the, this is the one-year agreement with PINMAC. During the work session we talked about, we have an opportunity to look at a one-year agreement or a three-year agreement. 
uh, the big difference within the one to three year agreement is going to be that markup rate. The markup rate is established based on the pay rate that the district has for our substitute daily, that's an eight hour day generally, for our substitute teachers. As it currently stands, our rate is $115 per day. The long-term sub, and the long-term sub is anything that's 10, 10 days consistently within that same assignment. Once they hit that long-term rate, it's $218 per day. Uh, those are generally for um, FMLA or maternity type leaves where we have those absences. That markup rate at 31%, again, we talked about that's the one-year agreement rate. A three-year agreement rate is 30.5%. So it really there's a half a percent difference. Uh, based on our projected numbers, that's anywhere from two to $3,000 um, uh, for that um, extended contract time. Uh, some of the things that PINMAC does provide for us, uh, they do a lot of the recruiting. I mean, in addition to what we do here locally, they vet out, which means they're working through PINMAC and the school district on their, on their background checks, uh, family background checks. Um, and then they help to assign the substitute teaching uh, to all of our buildings across campus. There's a couple things to kind of highlight. We do use a system called Frontline. Uh, this is something that works in conjunction with some of the other systems within our district, such as our attendance, uh, also with our hiring and recruitment piece. Um, so this is an added component in which we would purchase and utilize, even if we weren't utilizing the PINMAC program. Uh, PINMAC has their own additional program that we could use um, that would be lowering our cost markup rate on that 115, but because we're using this across different avenues within the district, it's really not feasible for us to have something new added on just to get that small discounted rate on the markup. Uh, some other things that they provide with us is they, they have a fairly large pool. Right now their pool is of substitute teachers who are willing and able to go to the camps and school districts are just shy of about 300. And so a lot of the conversations about, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we had total control of our subbing staff services is, will we be able to get that pool at 300 plus um, if we were to venture out on our own? And some of us would say, absolutely, our, our substitute teachers love being at Camden. Others would say, but it loses some flexibility because they're in that pool to go to different places. Do we still have some flexibility, even with the PINMAC structure, that we can find our own substitute teachers? We absolutely do, and we try to do that as often as we can, whether that be with uh, some student teaching options, you know, those that are finishing up their student teaching, maybe have some extra time. Um, so we can still do that. Um, some of the downsides and just the conversations that we have with our current substitute teachers um, is the, the pay structure. Right now, if you're with PINMAC, you're going to get a weekly paycheck for the work that you've done. The way we're currently set up within our district, it's going to take a month to get that. And so some people look at that as if we're on a um, kind of an at-will employee, it's hard to budget for those on those monthly scans versus kind of the weekly. That's kind of the biggest thing. Um, is that something all, we could adopt someday? It, it's possibly it's possible something we could look at. I think it would take some additional people in order to run that payroll on a weekly basis. Bi-weekly might even, maybe even be bi -weekly, maybe. bi weekly could be some option. We can look at some of those things. Is that what I mean every two weeks? Bi monthly. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Uh, but <laughs> we're with you. We can, we can look at that. Bi so, monthly is a little two bit more than two weeks. Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. So we can kind of look at some different options. Um, one of the things with that markup rate, just so everyone is aware, we, we budget anywhere from about 800 to 900,000. Dr. Piper talked about it within his forecast. And so, you know, um, it's really hard. That's not a fixed number. That's, it's going to fluctuate based on our need. So one of the things that we've done when we came in about two years ago following COVID is we wanted to see if we can find solutions to bring that fill rate down. You know, when we were at about, um, 2021, it was around that 85%, and we were able to get that closer to that 95% fill rate, which means we don't have those open spots where we don't have to have shifting classrooms and shifting teachers, which we know that when we can have our small class sizes, which has been a, a big goal of our district, we don't want to double up on our classrooms when we can't find substitute teachers, and we don't want to overly use our teachers to help cover classes uh, because they know they, that they need that time for um, prep. And, and really just getting things that they need to done for our students. And so those are some of the things that we look at when trying to find creative solutions to maybe go away and be so self-sufficient. Um, that's very difficult to do, but I think we've got some strategies and we're working towards that. Um, I say all that to help answer some questions. I still would like to present the opportunity of that one-year agreement as we continue to work some of those strategies to become self reliant Didn't you request the numbers of... Um 
requested something like where where are the subs have been from or how many that yeah something so, you requested so i requested from pin mac and that's where i get that 300 so 300 subs are someone who has agreed a sub who has agreed to be within the campton school district over the course of the last year that could just be one time but that's where we get that number of just shy of 300. but we don't know how many of those 300 we've used not those we've used those we've used one the time, 300. 300. okay that's not just the pool no that's not just the pool that's that's our local i would okay. say pool someone okay. who has set foot within the campton school okay. district mm -hmm. through pin mac and pin mac doesn't have any uh, plan to increase their sub pay so we established the sub pay okay so their markup when we do an agreement we can we can raise that to anything that the board feels that then we need to do their markup rate is what we're agreeing to so that 31 percent for that annual renewal is based on you'll see the bill rate is what we get at that 150 but that's based on our pay rate so whatever our pay rate is established it'll be 31 percent above that which is what we would be billed as a district I remember you mentioned earlier we didn't we don't really know what else age pays there no we, yeah I, we do 125 125 yeah. okay 125. so we have I, personally we haven't done a lot of comparisons to some of the other districts um but i guess those stages at 125. as long as we stay competitive yeah and i think yeah. eldon's higher i think the gal the other night said and there's some different pay structures that when we talk about what districts are doing for pay there's some different things for certified teachers versus only sub certified teachers there's different so there's a whole gamut of different ways that you can look at that pay structure. Um, but as for PINMAC, it's all about that markup rate. Yeah, I do think we need to be careful about those numbers you might do when you're comparing school districts because that is something that school districts have targeted their um, ESSER money towards. Like when you get ESSER money and, and they, they put that So they can subs, afford it this year and then next year. Maybe they're... down the road they can. Um, so I think that's one thing to consider that um, it's unlikely that would go down, but it might when cut from your regular teachers or are you going to cut from from your subs that you know that, that may not be a, a, a sustainable at that number without ESSER funds so do we have a an actual number that we actually paid and max for last school year I've got some numbers I, 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 numbers. This. I got this year's right here in front of me I can look I can give you last year's Oh, that's and this year. Just curious. So it's seventy five percent of the yeah, year. So this year, this is through uh, three twenty two. So I, I watch these weekly. Uh, our total spend through them right now is five hundred fifty three thousand seven hundred fifty seven. And that's that's Pen Mac and so th that is the total. <coughs> that's the total for our sub services. Yeah. So yeah, we're so we're right on. I mean. We've got five different uh, so we're, we're budget lines for subs and all the ones that they're all around 75 to 79 percent so, okay, we're, so we're tracking we're tracking to spend around 838,000 okay this this month alone it was on our on our uh -huh. our checks was uh yeah 101,000 okay yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, just, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out how off these figures That's that they what gave we were us are trying to explain to you when we yeah. you know they, they they did what they could do to give us numbers but i think they're they're so they're yeah ba basically i don't think we have at to least our spend but, yeah. from our their their projection of what we're spending and what reality what we're spending we saw immediately in the numbers they shared with us mm -hmm. that was off yeah well and i mean those aren't annual numbers that they shared with us we believe that's the time when they gave us the proposal yeah. is okay. closer to the accuracy piece i mean the where they're, where, where they're coming up with money that that we would spend what they claim is included is yeah there's a couple of them that i, I won't i won't get into that but right. <laughs> yeah, they're they're it, reaching it, there's areas <laughs> that's, right. not, that's obviously not independently done that's done yeah, by the sales yeah. trying to get you to use the product. so you got to see through that yeah so i see two things so if we can if we can kind of ask around our, our neighbor districts to see make sure we're competitive and then it sounds like i I, I think honestly, I think we're we're pretty close to the middle. Um, Osage is. I, I mean, t a ten dollar difference per day, I, I would consider competitive. Eldon, I think, might be a little more. Uh, Max Creek is way lower. I think they're I think they're still like eighty seven dollars a day. Um, and you know the the outlying county schools are. I think they're pretty close. They're they're in the ninety. 
ish per day. So I mean, we're we're pretty much in the middle as far as okay. uh, schools let somebody on this substitute pool would go to for the day. And what did you say the fill rate for the year has been, or was that at No, our fill rate for this current year is at just over ninety four percent through February. Um, for teachers. So we look at a parafill and a total fill rate. So we have we use our subservices for just the instructionals. So not with maintenance, not with bus drivers or anything like that. So a teacher fill rate is at 94. The parafill rate is about 96. So we're sitting at about a 93 overall uh, fill rate for our staff. If we go back for a five-year comparison, that's the closest thing. That was kind of that COVID year. But our fill rate for our pairs was down to about 72%. And the total fill rate was 88. So we're the highest we've been in a fill rate for the last five years. The other thing that I think is important to look at is on that historical fill rate sheet that I think we shared as well, is we are, we are using less subs. So back in 2021, we had just over 1,200 subs within a, a para. And our teacher fill rate, we had just that, what was it, 5,000 5, subs. Right now, we're about half through that, so at 28 and at 737. So we're really trying to cut down that sub. What we talk about, those creative ways to fill those classrooms. And so our fill rates are going up, and, and we feel like we're... We're getting a handle on how we can better better manage that here locally. Do we have any idea how many have been filled? I mean, I know ultimately they're through PENMIC, but how many have been filled, like at a building level? I, that that's, was my next question. Is, is there any way to determine, you know, break the fill rates down per building? And we can break the fill rates down per building as far as whether our building secretaries or if we're doing that for contacting for like long-term leaves, I think we don't have a structure in place right now, but we can start gathering that data. Like Andy, forward. do you have any idea? I mean, I know it would be ballpark, but how many you all feel like the teacher requests them, they contact them, it doesn't, I mean, PINMAC gets their piece, but they're really not. Do you mean like our secretaries start getting on there and calling them? And or a teacher them? will say, you know, would you, will you sub for me on these days? And then they turn that in. The teachers Sometimes already they'll let them know, like, if they're going made to direct contact, in, but to, to know that they actually reached out and asked them, you don't know. Now, we work with ours, those long term subs, you know, making sure we have that the right fit for yeah. coming in for those long term, yeah, with that. But it's it's not uncommon for us, I think, in, in conjunction with the Mac talking back and forth and about what is the higher need, what can we piece together, what can we. Yeah. We've gotten creative this year. It does feel a lot better this year than what it has been. Yeah. And Melissa, you may be able to speak to that. If, I mean, uh, I know, well, my daughter subs, I know almost all of hers are a teacher has requested her and said, can you do these days, which you may well have preferred subs. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know how, would you have any idea how? I think it's actually the minority. Most people just put in a sub. Okay. And I will say part of the frontline system that utilizes PINMAC is our teachers can put preferential subs within that. And so they yeah. get that option too. Or they can say, you know, this sub just didn't work out with my, the dynamics of my classroom. I don't want them in this particular classroom. So we do get a little bit of that can, as well. Can I, we used to have the option to assign, and that would make less uh, work for the, uh, for the secretary. The disadvantage and the reason they took that option away is I guess some people weren't checking Whereas now, you know, I check with my person and I could just go add them because they agreed and Matt took that option away if that's... Oh, you know. oh so what do they have, what do you have to do? I have to contact the building secretary and ask if she'll put the date. And then she has to do Because with the preferred, like I put my top five and all that means is it goes out to that top five like earlier. 20 minutes mm -hmm. earlier. But if you want to make sure they get it, you have to both be sitting on the computer at the same time and submitting play a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and we, I did that for a while before Chris was like, <laughs> I could just do that for you. Well, you don't have to play the game. Well, and I'll formally register my complaint. I do not like, and I don't know where it would stop, that they can pay $7 or whatever it is, and they get, those subs yeah. get the list first before it goes to the ones that's that don't good. pay. That's they said it's not. Actually, that's not even PINMAC. PINMAC. That, that's a, a third party ad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, PINMAC. PINMAC. So are they selling so, the list? Yeah. How, how does somebody get the list to know who paid this month and gets the priority? Nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's why I say it's been that. I mean, somebody, I mean, they're not getting that information from us. Oh, I know that. Yeah, I, I would be interested to, to know if it's, if it's harder to get positions filled by a sub and for, you know, third and fourth grade as opposed to high school. We can break that down by building because we have the location. I will say because there's there's different revenues or, or budget lines, there's things for professional development, there's things for athletics, and so some of those things would be, be skewed based upon those reasonings. You know, when you're thinking of when I'm thinking of secondary, I'm thinking it's because we're seeing so many activities, whether that be coaches or sponsors, you know, that's where that's gonna fill. And so I know we've got different lines for that. But we've got to look at that too as the, the reasoning, not yeah. just the location. And I, the the reason I ask is it has been suggested that uh, and if I mean if we're filling them, we're filling them. But I'm not sure that's 100 percent true. Uh, it has been suggested that we do uh, some maybe explore the possibility of doing a differential, like a couple extra dollars a day for the lower grades because. The subs need more of an incentive to take those jobs as opposed to waiting to see if they can get a high school job. Because their, their day is vastly different. I mean, vastly. <laughs> I mean, it kind of depends. I mean, some people are just built for preference. And, you know, and, and there are, you know, I, it's, it's yeah, yeah, my, my wife subs and, uh, you know, her, her day is way easier in the high school, uh, way easier. As opposed to, you know, she takes a, a job with the Littles, but she she's done quite a bit of Littles because, you know, teachers, uh, one in particular, has activities that she's going a lot for, and, uh, you know, they, they've they determined that it's better for the kids if they always see the same. Mm -hmm. If it's not your same teacher, you know, it, it at least have the same the stuff. Yep. So. Uh, but other than that, she really... I mean, you know, it's. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we'd have to look at that because I think there's any number of people that would tell me that they would, they would much rather have uh, elementary than high school because of, uh, you're dealing with adults more than the high school or you're dealing with the middle school. Yeah. And they, yeah. You know, and, you know, again, you know, I, in different. The same way people choose what grade level they want to work right. the subs do too. Yeah. And, and, you know, depending on what their experience and, you know, personality are, <clears throat> if you're taking a, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade position, you're actually teaching. Whereas if you're taking a high school position, everything's, you know, planned out for the day. You know, all you do is tell them, no. get on your Chromebook and go here. Yeah. And then, you know, so some people may, you know, some I of the subs some may the prefer to actually be able to I you think know, some of the secondary engage. discipline challenges can be. And then, yeah, so, you know, it's. Perspective, <sighs> yeah. But, uh. So, what's your recommendation? A one-year agreement. It sounds like we have st strategies in mind of how we can be self-sufficient, but we're not quite there yet. Yeah. So I think the one-year, we're not getting, getting anything in the three-year. Mm -hmm. I think one year, we just still got to kind of keep kicking that can down the road. Yeah. And, and we've shared some ideas, and we're trying to put some things in place. Like I said, but the first thing is getting that feel right, trying to make sure we're getting people in front of our students and, and allowing our teachers to, to get the time they need to work. and then. From that, we're going to see how we can better streamline through this process. Uh, we've been open and honest with PINMAC about our desire to try to be self-reliant on this, um, but we do see some obstacles that we've got to work through, and, and I feel like we're closer than we had this discussion last year, but we're still just, we're not quite ready to feel like we can go out on our own just yet. Can yeah, we commit like to actively some. pursue cutting the strings? Front office, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it, honestly, it's, it's been something that we've been working towards for a while there's you know it's just logistically it's not something you just do overnight unfortunately but uh, do we have our permanent subs in place already I think we I think we decided to pause on that we paused on that just because we were looking at the number of what that could do and what kind of impact it could truly have and it just wasn't going to be efficient a way to do that yeah. and you know I, that, again that's something what I think we could maybe look at as as a part of uh, you know, doing it ourselves. Uh, I, I, I know. But it, up until then, I, I just don't know that it's going to be fiscally feasible. All right. 
Everyone's got a mood to accept the uh, one-year agreement with uh, Pimax Staffing Services, Inc., as presented. Can I ask one question? Oh, I have yes, one question. Absolutely. Sure. This doesn't necessarily freeze subpay if we wanted to pursue. No, no. Okay. No, we, we control. They go with our rate, yeah. okay. and they add 31%. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, go good. back. I'm good. I I'll second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, good discussion. All right, let's uh, move on to another good discussion. Let's talk about local um, career letter planning and funding. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of go through some of this. This is a similar document that was presented over the last uh, couple of years or so. Uh, this is ideally centered around the DESIC guidance with that funding formula, in which we talked about 60% uh, of that allocation that's been given to our district. Um, a lot of the guidance from DESI is is what we've cho chosen to use. A little bit of historical knowledge we've talked about during the work session. Uh, when DESE and the state said, hey, we don't have the allocations to fund career ladder, the Campton School District said, hey, we're going to take that on. We're going to do that ourselves, fund it ourselves at 80% of that max rate. Uh, when career ladder came back into the allocations, it's like, hey, there's still a lot of uncertainties about how much this is going to be funded, how long that's going to be uh, intact. Let's continue to go with those those state requirements and, and that grant program, of the career ladder grant program. But let's maintain that 80% of whatever's out there because of the unknowns. How many people are going to to access these funds? How long is it going to be funded? And, and we thought we'd go with that um, that strategy of hey, let's know where we are and, and see from there. Uh, there has been a lot of conversations about this is a priority. But as Ms. Griswold said during the work session, it is one of those bargaining chips. Hey, there's some career ladder funds. If we can put that just into that base, uh, that base teacher salary increase, which is a big piece, is how do we move up the state minimum? Um, this, is a, this is an area in which there's a lot of talk about the same thing with, with transportation. When they say they fully fund transportation, it's really 75% of your district costs. That's fully funded. That's still huge, but that, that's a chip that can also be thrown in when we're talking about overall um, state money. So what we've done here, anything that I've highlighted within your document is a slight change uh, from the previous year. And I'm going to tell you kind of the first thing, the, press, the professional growth plan, you see that highlighted? That's really just a, a PDP. Uh, we had a professional development plan that DESE requires, but within our evaluation system we call that a professional growth plan, a PGP. So I just try to get common language across the board. What is our professional growth plan according to DESE? Well that's our professional growth plan, PGP. And so that's why that's highlighted across the board. Uh, the stage, I've highlighted that because there's conversation. Again, the maximum amount of dollars with each of those stages varies. Uh, since we're currently funding at 80%, that is what you'll see in this document. But if we were to go to the 100% uh, funding rate on stage one, it would be 1,500. Stage two would be 3,000. And stage three uh, would be 5,000. Again, as Dr. Piper presented, if we wanted to go to that 100% of the funding, which this listed is at 80, it would be an additional 140,000, approximately, right? Because you don't, our teachers don't have to participate in career ladder, it's completely voluntary. So we look at the ones historically that have participated. We also know that you move up each stage throughout your career. So if you're a stage one this year, you'd be a stage two, so that dollar amount fluctuates, right? Depending on the teachers that are participating and the teachers on staff that qualify for those various stages. So when we say approximate, it is truly an approximate, about a $140,000 increase uh, to the overall budget. Um, nothing else has really changed. Anything that is highlighted is things that we just wanted to kind of clean up the language. Um, prior to this year, this would be for the 24-25 school year, it said you had to be certified in the area in which you taught. DESE changed that guidance to say maintain appropriate certification. Um, it really just kind of opens that door a little bit of, of flexibility. So if we have someone that's working on a provisional that might have a certification, say, at the secondary level, but they, they have a provisional now at the elementary level, that's still an appropriate DESE certification. That still qualifies them. Do provisionals have a cap of uh, time to fulfill? Generally, you get two years with an option of an extension. So I'd say maximum of three reason. years. An extension mm -hmm. would be one. Mm -hmm. Um, so then you'll also see that professional PGP, that's just the language piece that is staying consistent within our district. Uh, also within the DESE guidance, guidance, you have to complete your career ladder by May 31st of that fiscal year. So right now we're coming to the conclusion of this 
uh, career ladder plan. And so I've sent out information. I'm trying to make sure we've got all the documentation needed for DESE. So our teachers have been seeing some, some verification forms. They've been seeing some emails just to make sure that everybody's on the same page as we get closer to that deadline. This highlight says, hey, if you want to start your fiscal year for the next year on May 1st, you're able to do that. So if you finish your hours this year and you want to start for next year, like over the summer, then you can start that as early as May 1st and they will continue over. So we've highlighted that so people understand it. We've had, we've had that in play for the last two years. A lot of people try to help out with summer school or STEM camps or STEAM camps, I should say, uh, and just different activities to kind of prepare them for the next school year. That also helps because of those large hour commitments, stage three at 100, stage two at 75, stage one um, at 50. Other things that I wanted to highlight, because we are a little bit, you have to serve a minimum of one year on stage one. You have to have at least two years of state teaching experience to qualify for stage one, um, but you have to be on stage one the first year that you're in career ladder eligible. So if you're coming to us uh, from out of state, if you're coming to us from a district, you have to start on stage one. You have to do that for one year before you can move on to stage two, regardless of your experience. Um, moving on down, you'll see eligibility for stage, uh, stage two is the same thing. You have to be on stage one for at least one year, then you can go to stage two. Uh, you have to be on stage one for two years to move on past stage two. And then once you get to stage three, you can stay on stage three, stage three but if you don't acquire 100 hours, you're still eligible for stage three the next year, but you can still get paid out as a stage one or two, depending on the hours that you've accumulated. Um, really, that, that's about it. These other highlighted pieces, if and when this is approved, uh, I will send out a career ladder sign-up sheet. This just indicates the interest so we can get those anticipated numbers to DESE. That helps with that allocation. Again, if the allocation, they feel like, hey, we can fully fund everybody's application, then they'll say, hey, you're good to go. If we fall short, and I talk about the DESE appropriation, if that falls short, then they'll reach back out and say, hey, this is the new appropriation, here's how much you're eligible for, then we can revisit how much we want to put into those programs and those stages. Uh, we also will share out the district career ladder log, which is a similar template across all buildings, and um, so we can track those hours. That's something that is shared with me that I can double check as we go. If they have questions, we can say, hey, this doesn't quite match up. We also have this year have added the activities inappropriate list, and this is the DESE guidance that says, hey, these, these activities are not approved for a career ladder. Is that new? Uh, they put one out last year. It's so the similar. first, very similar. Yeah, very similar. The first year they did not have an, a, an inappropriate list. They said, hey, really, as long as it's for the betterment of programs. And then I think as they were going through some auditing pieces, they're like, you know what, ticket, ticket taking, uh, working on concession stands, probably not really an improvement of a program. Um, so those are some type of things that are on that inappropriate list. Um, you know, it has to be school-centered, has to be working with your kids, has to have um, something to do with instructions. Um, those are kind of the highlights, but then there's this list. And so rather than going through on all these logs and saying, hey, that's not quite appropriate because this is not on the list, we're just going to put that appropriate list out there and say, hey, reference back to the manual uh, of what we can and cannot count. So um, that's kind of the presentation that I have. Uh, I fully recommend that we fund Career Ladder at what levels. I'm going to leave that over to you to, to kind of determine what we want to do with the budget that Dr. Piper had indicated during the work session. So that's the only difference between this year and last year's plan? Yeah, just those highlighted pieces. Other level. than striking through, I highlighted just the change of language. Have we reached out to like the TAC committee and got their... Yes, TAC would like to fully fund career ladder. <laughs> well, yeah, but <laughs> be okay with uh, They also, during their salary proposal last month, they discussed that, how important that is in terms of recruitment and retention. And so we're not opposed to that. We see that it does help with the instructional improvement. It really comes down to that. Is that the allocation of that extra 140000 approximate that you want to take into the budget to fund that career ladder piece? But career ladder as a whole, you can, ladies from TAC, you can say career ladder has been a great piece. But there's just some elements like the funding it is really where we are. That's our, That's where we come to a, a pass. Yes. Yeah. You guys okay with the uh, with the funding proposal? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and, yeah, it, it basically, it, this is assuming that the legislature 
Okay, assuming we get all doesn't, the funding, doesn't, I would like to say that, that but, you know, we have been talking about we're kind of gaining people's hours and when we adopted the new salaries, but it was a three-year plan and we had some pretty big, I think last year and this year were some pretty big chunks of money that we're spending on salaries. And so that makes it a big uh, ask to do a little bit more than to go to the 100%. But next year, I think, is supposed to be, based on what we talked about last year, supposed to be a little bit less. And obviously after that year, we're supposed to be, it's supposed to be kind of Maybe even. Kind of and so I think at that point, when we kind of get after this, these two big year humps, that going to fully funded would be a priority and a goal for us. There's a three year swell there. Exactly. Because and we're one year up, into it. You're catching up back here. For this, we're about to start <clears> the <throat> second year of that. And then, you know, you got, you had the most people to catch up year one. Some of them, if there were three years or less, we caught them up the first year. Some of them were more than three, so it took us, some of them were. 10, 11, because it took us more years to catch them up. So, but there is a, each, with each year passes, we, we will be uh, making those corrections with less additional money put into the salary schedule. Now, it's, it's all, they're always going to be paid at that level, but we're not catching up multiple years at once, once we get past 25, 26. So, yeah, you're exactly right. Do teachers right. have that awareness of the why or the, I mean, I know it's hard to comprehend if you're not. Oh, if they are reading the TAC advisory, if they're having conversations, yes. They're getting uh, Dr. Price has volunteered, volunteered that he'd love to make a video. No, I was volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the words are, quit writing the emails. They're not reading the emails. Put out a video. <laughs> Just clarifying some, some, some of those things. Because when information comes from us, we would like to think we're important enough that people read it, but they don't. But when they come from Dr. Price, they will open it. So they're, um, I think, just clarifying some of the reasoning with the three years. And also there was a confusion of because the state is offering 5,000, that we were applying for 5,000 and keeping 1,000. And that was oh, just a gosh. confusion that needs to be clarified. And that was one of the things people are upset about that it's not true. So Dr. Price has said, bit. yes, I would love to do that. <laughs> yes. yeah. It needs to be clarified again. We again. clarified we have, a couple of times. We have clarified. We, clarified. we, we, have didn't, clarified. we didn't keep money I mean, off of the curl. It all went to teachers. We didn't keep it for yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, we're not getting from that area. <laughs> no. 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 So the only real problem I have is that the, the, the three-year catch-up plan that we have, it, that doesn't involve everybody. That involves a few teachers, right? I mean, not everybody got skipped or got held back or whatever. It, the career ladder does involve everybody, with the exception of first year teachers. I mean, yeah, other I've than that, the, first two years in the career, career ladder does. It involves everybody, and that's, <laughs> I feel like that's a place where we could catch up. You know, I guess if my thought of it is that's a place where we could, uh, we can kind of shine, you know, by offering that $5,000 out of when we offer that max to people coming to our district, that that's kind of an incentive for them. You know, hey, we give the full maximum, the $5,000 here, you know. Maybe rather than add the $500 to the base, we add it to the fully funding of the career ladder. But not everyone does career ladder and the 500 of the base does but it's option, But it's optional to everybody with the exception of first year. Two well, years. first two years, two and years. if you come to our district, you start on stage one regardless of your experience. Plus, I think clearly it also requires more work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not just the, the 500 yeah, yeah. base is yeah. to the base. Just given, yeah. The curl does require more work as well on top and, of uh, that. And, you know, it, honestly, yeah, that, that would be my biggest fear with rolling it in, rolling what we would spend on this program into salaries across the board is that students benefit from teachers willingness to spend extra time with them and you know if if that motivation is you know the students just need me to spend extra time with them that's awesome if that motivation is i need to make a little extra money i don't care as long as the student is gaining from that experience so as, as you know clarify too if you're on stage one um a five hundred dollar increase to your base is greater than the increase would be if you went with the five thousand, three thousand, fifteen hundred. Because you're only going to get three hundred dollars on stage one, you're only going to get six hundred dollars on 
about stage two. So we talk about the thousand, but that's only stage three, right? Which is definitely not all of our staff members, and it wouldn't be anybody that's recruiting into the district because they can't start on stage. They can't three. start on three. They have to start on stage one. So we're going to give a new recruit to our district, whether they're a brand new teacher or an experienced teacher. The career ladder would give them three hundred dollars more, and the base would give them five hundred dollars more. Yeah. Not to mention every letter that was sent out to the teacher said the base was going to be five hundred dollars more. And then five hundred dollars more next year. So we've kind of already told them that and agreed to that. Um, well, and I honestly, no, I, I wasn't. We need to do that. To take that back. But I, I was just, just the comparison. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, we need we need, that. That's a separate issue. I mean, that's and we need to do that because we need to do it. Well, and I, no, I agree. Because. We need to get to this the to the part of fully funding it. It's just it's I think. I just think there's other school districts around us that are fully funding it. There's also others that aren't that aren't doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Like school DSH, we yeah. said, didn't yeah. do it. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're, you're a year two teacher and you're doing stage one career ladder, working an additional 50 hours, plus your our base, you're making more money. You're also working 50 more hours. But I think a lot of teachers will tell you that they spend a lot more than 100 hours outside of the classroom with kids to begin with. I guarantee that. They're, oh, happy, yeah. they're happy they're getting paid for it with the career ladder, but... That's that's a part of teaching, you know that they they consider. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I I've told the teachers I always fight for them to fully fund it if I could, and so that's my two cents worth. And yeah, I mean, it, I, if the state removes the funding completely, uh, I I want personally anyway. Want to continue the program in some capacity? Uh, it's it's not something I don't think any of us are, are looking to get rid of, regardless if if the state's kicking in money or not. But uh, we just it, it especially if we get to that point, we need to figure out what that looks like. But and as it stands now, if if they're going to keep funding it, then that's that basically is budgeted. And, I think we probably need to stay where we're at. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any other questions about that? Do we have a motion? Or is it something we need we we have to decide right now, or is there something we need to so table? If we're now? going to participate in the career ladder program we have to submit with board approval our application to the state by the end of April so. uh, again with the caveat that if the funding changes then we're not beholden to this correct yeah, we, if we submit the plan and the funding from the state structure changes then, then we will have to uh, we'll have to readjust and approve a different to, to continue yeah. with our plan. Yeah. As well, the the plan. If we approve the plan, the plan would be approved. It would be the pay structure the, right, based right. upon the appropriations. Yes, that we could reevaluate. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm pretty sure everyone agrees. Is. <laughs> yeah. What we want to do. Okay, I uh, so, have a motion to approve it as uh, the 2024-2025 career letter plan. So moved. Do a second. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. throwing some tough ones at us today all right uh, so we can move on to policy and regulation which is uh, policy GCBA professional staff compensation all right we're gonna keep throwing the heavy ones at us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so this is a policy that's come through uh, through TAC and through really through the salary conversations and and my screen's thrown off here so I apologize um, so, kind of want to highlight this because this really I didn't feel fit fit in with the salary when we were talking about salaries with negotiations with the salary committee because it's really based around policy, and so I've got both the policy as well as the regulation 
And so I uh, kind of want to emphasize kind of what we're talking about here. And this is basically about movement on the salary schedule. And so I think it's important to have this prior to the salary schedule conversation because it doesn't matter what the salary schedule says. What we're talking about is the policy about movement within that salary schedule. Um, specifically, I've highlighted the two areas in question. Uh, as you can see, this is policy GB, uh, GCBA, Professional Staff Compensation. And we do try to uh, follow this even with our um, non-certificated staff that may have some additional trainings, whether that be with maintenance, whether that be with uh, our technology. We try to follow the same idea is, hey, you can move down and you can move over one. And that's based upon this particular policy. And so I've highlighted what is truly in question. Not everything of this policy is in question. It's just item number three. Um, an employee may not advance more than one step vertically and one column horizontally per year on the salary schedule unless allowed by the board adopted rules. You guys have adopted that. We talk about that golden ticket, that three-year plan. So we've, you have that in the minutes. You made the approvals. Those that have that letter get to move whatever was designated within that letter. So that's outside of this. That's already approved within that policy. Um, and so what we're doing now for budget preparation, Dr. Piper and myself are trying to get the information from our uh, teachers, certified staff, who are seeking a higher degree and higher ed. And so what we're looking at is, okay, we sent out the information based upon this particular salary, sal or this policy that says, hey, give us notice of where you're going to be so that we can plan accordingly. According to this policy, you get to move over one column. And so we sent that out and we're like, whoa, wait a second. Hey, I've got this many hours, but my column only allows me to move over uh, eight hours per year in terms of a horizontal across the board, right? And, and we can see that this policy um, was first adopted in 1994. I think that's important to point out. Instruction delivery from 1994 to 2024 has changed significantly. You know, in 1994, I'll say most of the time, because I don't like to do obsolete, uh, absolutes, is you went onto a college campus, you sat there in your evenings, you probably were there maybe even the weekends, all summer long, you weren't advancing more than about eight hours per, per year, right? A couple co classes here and there. Now you can almost, and there's probably cases that you could, get an advanced degree within the calendar year. You know, if not the calendar year, probably within 18 months. That, that's realistic. And so there's some things about delivery that we need to talk about as well. And so when we send that out, uh, we were, um, I guess, an other item to consider was the regulation that went with that particular policy. And within this regulation, it kind of highlights a little bit more of, hey, here's how you have to go about getting that movement on the salary schedule. One, it has to be approved with the, uh, the school that you are in an approved uh, program of study. It can't just be you're going to get different hours here and there. It's got to be a progression towards a, a degree, not even a certificate. I think we've had those conversations as well. What's the difference between the two? Item B here is highlighted because it also helps to outline that. Uh, a teacher may advance from his or, her own, his or her own classification group to a higher group upon the completion of the professional training for classification within the higher group. So one interpretation of that is, once I get a degree, I'm in the higher group. Another interpretation is, that's a horizontal column. The column is the group, right? And so that's kind of the question. It says I can move up a classification, but the classification is those eight-hour blocks, not so much the degrees. And it also goes in to highlight that here's what you can do as you're going through those horizontal things. You know, if you want anything above a master's plus 16, you have to be in a specialist program. You can't just be taking those hours. And it kind of breaks that down, okay? Uh, what it means to go above a master's plus 24, what it means to go above a, mass, a specialist degree, what it means to be in the doctor program itself. Uh, we go on to say, okay, administration should follow. You have to have that eligibility classification. So that's the letters we sent out. Hey, if you're currently enrolled, if you're moving up, let us know. So we've got the, the written notice that I'm going to uh, William Woods University, I'm working on my master's degree, and I planned on having this many hours completed, and then by September 1st or the end of August, that has to be a transcript that's sent to us so that we can make that correct placement. So we're following everything as in this regulation based on that policy. The question that we want to know is, 
we have teachers who have made that major jump from, say, a master's to a specialist. And because of the way that this reads, that's more, that's three classification groups. It would take them essentially three years to catch up to that degree seeking column. Whereas, um, I guess we just want to know, what do we want to do with that? Do we want to look at this? Do we not want to look at this? Do we want to stay, stay as it is? In doing some research, I shared this with you all. What are some of the other policies within the surrounding districts? This is basically an MSBA policy that has very little touching to it. This particular regulation was last touched by us in August of 2022, and that's because we decreased the number of, of contracted dates. So it went from 185 down here to 179. So that's when it was last touched, and that was what was addressed. So my question is you, we're good. We like to follow policy, but there are also <coughs> teachers that have followed this policy, and I won't say the teachers, it's really not the teachers. We've got teachers that have moved up one classification at a time, historically, and we've got others that once they've got the degree, made big jumps. Uh, you guys create and write the policy, we enforce the policy. This is the policy in which we see, I just need to know how we need to go about doing that. Do we need to make changes and say, hey, we're good to go up with each degree? Do we want to stay with it is that you can only move up one horizontal and one vertical per year? We just want some clarification. Again, not salary rest necessarily, more of a policy change or review. And I'm going to turn over for the discussion now. So. I, I think you need to go to the big, I mean, if you get your doctorate, you need to move to the doctorate level because while we talk about how long it take, you know, it used to take three years or whatever to get to that stage, at that point you're also accruing the debt in smaller increments. Now when you go to at the rate in which tuition is for these programs, you're incurring all that debt in the first year and we're going to try to space it out the amount that you're going to get paid back. I don't think that's fair. Yeah, I feel like the extra jump is for the amount of money, I mean, that they're spending on it. <coughs> it's really to help them and sue the cost. I think it boils down to this was written in 1994 and access to... 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. I think we just need to get I mean, with the times. I was eight. <laughs> you know, and, and quite honestly, a master's is a master's. A doctorate is a doctorate. Mm -hmm. If it takes you 10 years to get one or 18 months, that, that would be well, the very thing. impressive. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if, if you're that driven and, you know, you, you can do that, then the end result is the you same. Got, you, you got universities that are doing some things that speed that up, like you're getting credit for times time that you've worked. You know, they'll give you some experience credits that they didn't do before. It's online. You used to, when I started, they only offered classes in the summer. You couldn't even do it during the school year. Um, and then they uh, gradually over time, when I got, by the time I got to my specialist, that you could do it, you know, fall, uh, spring, summer. You can do those three sessions. And now it's, you, you don't stop. It's online. They get access to it whenever. And if you're and I just look at some of our teachers, if you're trying to get this done before you start a family or trying to get this done before you advance too much in your career, you want to get that done quickly. Um, and we are benefiting from the knowledge they gain from that <coughs> immediately. We don't have to wait till later. Um, right. Because they finished that degree, they completed those courses, and I think that's, um, you know, that's one of those things that um, yeah. if we're asking for that and encouraging that, we see growth from that. Uh, why wouldn't we compensate for that? Yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's basically, you know, hey, congratulations, job well done. Uh, but don't use that degree or that knowledge for three years because we're not going to pay. Else. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. it, keep, it, keep it contained. And then once we get you on the right step, then you can start using it. Well, it that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> they, go to someone, they, they go to another district, they're going to get paid at that degree level. That, you know. You're talking about recruitment retention anyway. Yeah, yeah right. retention. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm kind of surprised this is the first time this has ever come up since yeah, 1994. Well, I think it's because when we look at those policies, again, we're trying to follow those policies and we look at that policy, we just want to follow it. There is enough questions that we just want to make sure we're being transparent about it and like, hey, we're going to follow any policy that's written to the, the best that we can. If we don't like the policy, let's go about the process and changing those policies. Well, maybe prior, So I really am yeah. not ready to have an adoption of a new policy. I want to be able to kind of tweak that language to fit those needs in which we talked about. But I think for the peace of mind for our teachers that are wanting to know, uh, they just want to get some kind of an agreement that let's revisit that because, again, it's not part of the salary discussion. So when we approve salary schedules, this is not necessarily a part of it. It's more of we have to have the policy in place before we get that transcript movement. But if we know how we're working towards that, 
I'll say we, Dr. Piper, can help budget a little bit for what those movements might look like and have a better picture instead of just being. No, oh they have goodness. to. They still have to go through the factory. They have to notify us, so we're still just not going to get uh, yeah, fifty uh, teachers yeah. come back and be like, "Hey, we're all doctors today." No, no, like, no. We'll, <laughs> we'll still go through meetings, everything so. that's listed right here on the regulation. Yeah, that, yeah so that's still notice. covered. It, it yeah, still is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they can't change within the year. So now, well, the other thing that come, comes up is you. It's contract year, contract year. So you, you can't start one place and then knock out twelve hours by the time you get to spring and then want to get bumped up there for the last several months of your pay yeah. it's still got to you got to tell us the, for that contract year yes um, so we've still got that which we'll space it out each year we won't get a lot of um, you know big surprises during the year it will be we'll know that's coming and be able to budget better for that um, but uh, I, I think we would probably I don't know where you're at um, Dr. Price I, I mean I feel like just in, yeah. Just so I don't know that it's a motion as much as just not, saying. Not so much as a motion right now because I want to come back with the language we yeah. can really yeah. clean up. Yeah. But just the assurance, like, hey, let's move yes. forward and looking to change that. This is the intent that we'd like to see. See if you can get that in front of us and then we can move forward with it. I think that goes a long way for the teachers who have been like, what are we doing? What, what have we heard? Yeah. And then also kind of give me the direction to kind of work with that language uh, of what we need to do. Uh, another piece is, you know, with our administrators, I'll probably do that. We talked about this last year. When administrators, they don't have any movement for the further seeking degrees, but to put something in that when an administrator re reaches the doctorate level, what kind of compensation that would look like. Because we've had those conversations where this was an agreement, but it's never been written. If we're going to tweak a policy about that, I'm going to try to work on that within this policy as well. So. Uh, with your, with your, I see a lot of heads movements. Again, we're not approving anything, but we have a direction, and we have to have that in play probably before um, June 30th because it'll be a big part of that budget. So, buys us some time that we all know the direction we need to go to get that prepared for you. So. Yeah. All right. I like Sounds it. Good. Sounds good. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That might be eating into that. Yeah, so we, we're going to, well, the next item is uh, approving our uh, MOUs for. So um, you got those. They were all uh, kind of supposed to be identical to last year, but thanks to Callie, she did catch um, a, a typo in one, which we ended up that Linda was uh, very helpful in getting that updated to you. So those changes have been made. The biggest, you know, the thing that she caught there is we do not have school-based mental health professionals. We have mental health professionals that we partner with. So we, um, most, a lot of districts for their MOUs have that school based in there, but we do not have that. Um, so we just wanted that change to just mental health professionals and that's been taken care of. So um, everything else is identical because we scrutinized last year. Yeah, yeah, everything else is identical. I haven't heard any concerns from our counseling department about how easy the process no, is. I mean, there's just, and it is, it is, um, Mrs. Nushi does a really good job with the um, COMC is one that um, uh, works with us in, uh, to be uh, on site when there is no transportation, when the kids, um, their parents cannot, they do not have transportation. Um, sometimes they're in Kenny Vento. You know, it's a low socioeconomic situation where they can't get them to the help they need. And then we do allow that in those very specific cases with the criteria that they walk through. Um, that, our, that our counselors take them through, and then our counseling department takes them. Uh, department head, uh, coordinator at the counseling department takes them through um, to make sure that we um, are are not using up those seats for kids who don't really really need it. And we also scrutinize very closely their instructional time to make sure that we're not pulling them out of key instructional times, putting them further behind. And that's all in those agreements. We see that in there. I think our principals, our teachers, our counselors do a great job of making sure, hey, let's not pull kids out of, you know, they're getting um, remediation and reading and then we pull them out all the time for a counseling session. We, we don't want that happening very often. We'd rather those happen after the school day. Um, and most of the time there are appointments available, not during school time, but for these specific cases where transportation is an impossibility, we do that. Um, so I think that's been handled really well. Um, that there is an appeal process. You know, if they come to me and they say, I feel like, you know, the counseling department said, I, I can't do this for my child, but I really, really need it. They can appeal that to me, and then I can, of course, override that if I want to and say, yeah, we're going to add them to the list. I've not done that yet because the process has been really good. I've been asked to do it, um, but we haven't done that yet. But I think that needs to be open in an appeal. Um, and 
that case, so uh, we've got um, some oversight over that process. Um, but uh, it has, it had, it had once, now that this MOU is in place, I think it's been, it's been good, and I've got a lot less worries about uh, do our parents know what's going on? They obviously know what's going on. That's a whole part of it. It's a prerequisite. You can't, uh, you can't be, they can't be involved with our students unless the parents seek out that involvement. So, uh, in our if the whole part of that process from beginning to end, um, and it is really us just helping the parents connect with those resources. It is not them, them usurping the parents' authority. That's the parents' number one uh, priority. They know their kids, and, and we need to give them the opportunity to be, uh, to be there for their kids. So this MOU does that, um, keeps our parents in the loop, but helps us uh, to also be supportive of that process. Do we use, uh, do we use these services for like behavior issues? Uh, it, it all depends on, so we, have our, we have our own stuff, and these are for the situations that rise beyond the scope of a school counselor or our special services. We yeah. do have some that obviously have um, things that require outside counseling and that need outside counseling um, from mental health professionals. So they, they, those will, uh, when they rise to that level um, and they qualify for those types of supports, then they get that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just reading in uh, Angie's written report, she's having some concerns with behavior issues in Dogwood, and it's getting worse. So I'll make sure she's getting her support. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Randy has something yeah, in his Randy report, did too. too. Yeah. Yeah, Randy did. Oh, that's right. You know, I, we, we, are, we are addressing that. We're seeing it across the district um, um, <coughs> with uh, our support of our staff. You know, we talked about with the staff, there were, there were two things that I really felt like collective efficacy for our staff, our certified staff and classified staff, that we really needed to work very hard on second semester of this year and next year and probably the year after it's going to be a several year process one of those was curriculum um, that the resources that they have truly support the instruction and help them get kids to um, a success ready level with the, all the standards that we're required to teach they need that kind of support a really good curriculum and the second one uh, has to do with behaviors that they we do have the supports in the building to support our teachers with some of the behaviors that they're dealing with um, if we we are it is not where we want to be. I will say this, um, just getting back from the National Superintendent's Forum in Chicago, I was asked to speak at that, um, and, and they're just dealing with 300 superintendents from 28 different states. Um, uh, I'm absolutely understand, I am thoroughly blessed to be sitting where I'm sitting. And to be in our school district is an absolute blessing compared to what other districts and other staff members are dealing with. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're satisfied because we're supposed to be better than everyone else because we're Lakers. So we're going to continue to get better at those things, but we are very blessed, but not satisfied. And I think that's what you're starting to see. And I think you're seeing that in those reports because our administrators are wanting to deal with those things and wanting to tackle those things head on. And we are considering a number of things, looking at our staffing for next year and some of the things that we need to do that, that speak to that culture and that climate, because that also is about retention and retaining the quality teachers we have. They need those level of supports. And even with our subs too, when we talk about it, we need that level of support. So um, we are coaching up our kids, and quite frankly, our kids need that. That's gonna, the number one reason why someone leaves a job is not because they don't know what they're doing. It's because they can't go on with the people around them. And those are the things that when those kids, and they have those behavior issues, they deal, they're dealing with a lot, and we need to provide a, a support, so a lot of support to get them through that. Um, so, and if it's, you know, and, and it, especially I know Angie works on it, and Latana, and the elementary, uh, you know, at OC Beach and Hurricane Deck with those the littles, you know, the first come in, they work really hard on that, getting them to adjust to what it means to be a student, what it means to be a linker, what it means to be a teammate. They're working really hard on that, and that will pay dividends each grade level as they go up. If we can intervene early, proactively, and keep them on the right path, then I think we can, uh, over time, and it's going to take time, we can, we can uh, impact this for the positive and make a big change. So we are working on that, and you will see more of that when we look at uh, class schedules and what we're placing and some of the staff that we're asking for in the next couple of months as we have all our, our um, staffing needs and expectations and positions that we hire for next year, I think you'll see that. And, you know, uh, the, the cold hard truth is uh, a child that has an exceptional behavior, behavioral issue uh, that is continuous, particularly, doesn't just affect that child's ability to learn. Everybody around. It affects every kid in the classroom. 
So it's, it, it, you know, if, if we can, if we have the ability to intervene and, uh, you know, and teach them, teach them better behaviors, they're going to be able to learn more and the kids around them are going to be able and, to learn and, better and too. When done properly, like I said, when done properly, with the support, understanding and communication, clear, open, transparent with the parents, these organizations do provide needed support in those areas. I, I just think the thing that we just have to make clear as a district is we honor our parents in that process. Absolutely. They are the deciding factor and we support the parent as well as the child because we're seeing at school that parent is also dealing with it too and we need to help them through that process and that's what these groups um, can do for us and can do for our kids and for our community. Well, and I mean quite honestly we, we don't have the ability uh, to operate without the parent. I mean, we, we, we can't take action and we can't fix anything unless the parent is making the decisions on how, how, what's involved. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Move to enter into MOUs with COMC Kids Harbor and Compass Health as presented. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. All right. Um, moving down the list here, we get item G approve the FY25 salary schedules. I'm going to start. We haven't seen it. I'm going to pull this up right now. Yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit. So I'm going to pull up this. This is the, uh, the proposed salary schedule that Dr. Piper has discussed, adding that $500 to the base um, and maintaining all of those steps for next year. You can see what those increases look like over in the yellow uh, that side column, and and as we go down, so from we're currently at forty-two thousand. You'll see with that proposal of five hundred dollars to the base and the bachelor's uh, step one, that would jump to forty-two five. All of the step increments remain the same, meaning the dollar amount remain the same for what those step increments were for this particular year, whether it be vertically or horizontally. Uh, we also point out, you'll see some big jumps, and we call them the pivotal years. You know, this is where we get competitive. I'm going to make it it's a little bit easier to see over in our yellow section uh, on year six. So this is generally after your tenured year, if you're with our district, that $400 jump jumps to $1,000 because we want to make that enticing. Uh, enticing. Oh, there you go. And then um, from that, within that particular column, you'll see that those $500 increases until you get to year 10. And then it's every five years you'll see those larger jumps. And so we are going to work on trying to highlight that out so that our teachers see, hey, that's great to add to the base, but what about me as a veteran teacher? You know, what can you do outside of career ladder, right? We've talked about that already. Well, hey, look, you're gonna, we, we appreciate where you are in those pivotal years, year six, 10, 15, 20, and you're going to see those jumps as well as your steps are going to increase as well. So this stays true with not only the proposal from our, our salary committee, uh, which involves all of our, our certified staff, but also with that commitment that this board and, and we made as administration saying, hey, we're going to try to do this three-year plan, and this is part of that three-year plan. Yeah, does, does this, I, I mean, is this in line with the, with the plan? What we discussed as 100%. far as okay yep and this is what dr piper was talking about within that budget forecast in the work session uh, here's what we've done and this includes when he said steps if you got in, and i'm the one that called it the golden ticket when i'm talking to the salary committee i'm like hey if you got that golden ticket you're you're good right um if you had a, a letter that said hey we're going to give you three steps here three steps here two steps here to get you where you need to be that's all encompassing with where you'll okay. move on those steps. And so we talked about it a little bit with that policy change, that unless otherwise seem fit, well, you have it in writing that that's what the board saw fit. So. And, and I think I would also, when you're looking at that, just to clarify another thing that we, we haven't really talked about that this point in the work session or now, is steps 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 didn't exist on the previous salary schedule. Yeah, really anything in so, here. So that's also at the, at the top end of our salary schedule. We kind of took the top out of that, of that all the way to 30 because unfortunately, and they can, the staff can tell you, we had teachers that were like, well, if my salary ends at 25, I guess I'll just take 25 and out because I can't make any more money and my three highest isn't going up. And so I think that's part of when we talk about retention. Um, there used to be a there used to be a thought process that at 25, well, there's a hundred first year teachers waiting to get in this district. Well, let's at 25, let's see if they'll they'll move on and we'll get a younger teacher and then we pay them a whole lot less. 
you lose all that experience, you lose all that wisdom, discernment, and leadership in your building, but it does, it is cheaper to go with a first or second year teacher. So we decided to take the top off that because I just, there were a lot of high quality teachers ready to go at 26 that, that needed to stay, we needed them. So um, I do think that's something that sometimes gets lost because it's a small number of people, but it's very impactful for the rest of their life because you're 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 28, 29, 30, that's your retirement right there. That pays you for the rest of your life, those three years. And it's very motivating for our teachers to bump that, to get that retirement where they can live and pay their health insurance and do that type of stuff in retirement because that's going to be a fixed income. They need it to be as high as they can be. So I think that's, we kind of, in, in catching people up with steps and all that sometimes gets lost about how important that was. So I really appreciate the board approving that last year and getting us back on that track for our staff. I will add, the, the other reason, even though this is something that was discussed within that three-year plan, as a board, annually, you have to adopt that salary yeah. schedule. Yeah. So that's why, I mean, even it's, though we have it in writing, we've got to still present that to you. And if something happens and maybe the assessed valuation went up or we saw that influx of uh, in income, then we don't have to stay committed to 500. It could go up. So that's the other benefit is, hey, we just want to see where we are. We've made this commitment. We could do more if we can. We just we really can't at this point. We want to stay with that commitment piece. And so that's the certified schedule as pre presented there. Um, we'd like to move on. And as Dr. Piper said, I don't have those classified schedules because we looked at that basically that that uh, two percent was it two percent twenty twenty cents an hour um, across the board. So that just is kind of keeping it close to what the certified schedule is in terms of uh, equity. And so again, as he said, I think he said it the best. You start with that base salary schedule, and then everything else kind of works off of that. Um, and so we kind of look at that. And then the extra duty piece, one of the things that we're trying to accomplish is, is trying to tie that also to that base salary so that we're looking at the percentage pieces. And so um, we know kind of where they need to line up. We've done a lot of comparisons on that. And so we want to be able to tie different uh, extracurricular activities into the base salary. So then it's not, hey, let's go approve the extracurricular, uh, the kosher stipends every year. It's, Anytime that there's an increase to the base, automatically that's going to be increased also with those extra duty stipends. And so it also gives us some ways to stay within that CSIP plan that we want to be in these competitive ranges in all areas, not just teachers or admin or even our classified staff. That includes our coaching staff. So if we can get that where it's competitive, again, tying that back to the base, then I feel like it's just going to help simplify and clean that up a little bit. And so uh, Dr. Piper can answer a few more questions on that piece as he's crunching the numbers over here, but that's the ultimate goal that we're trying to accomplish within those salary schedules. You want to add anything there? Well, I was just, I mean, I just, I'm sitting there trying to think how you guys make a motion and you know, approve this, cause unless you just do as presented. Uh, I mean, I don't know, I'm just sitting there trying to think how you do a motion with this, but, but I can, I mean, if you want to look at any of the classified, I can, I can show you, uh, Show you extra due. We plan on showing you extra due. Extra due is going to be kind of hard to show the way it's set up without seeing the person. So that probably needs to be. That's why personnel. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Do we have anything from the city um, TAC? Any um, the only comments? They've been great to work with. The only concern <coughs> that I've heard is that usually we have it like where it's linked and we could see it. And so it feels like there's some mystery to that, even though I know there's not. They would just like to actually see it and you know because that's all we're seeing uh, just to clarify that um, we can't post a salary schedule that's not approved because other people would then see that from other districts and they would come here and expect that maybe it didn't get approved so I think in the past it's been linked to the yeah. agenda like as a yeah. Yeah. this yeah, is what we're yeah, we could so did in the past did they link all the salary schedules or we got a bunch the of proposed them. The, the i think just the main one it was linked like that. And I would think the motion would be, I mean, the simplest motion, I guess, would be uh, just approve the as presented. As presented. Five hundred dollar increase to the base. <laughs> uh, classified salary schedule with a twenty cent increase. Hourly well, increase. Uh, so well, well there's there's more than that. I, I would say approve as presented <laughs> because there's also the difference I mean, of the steps and the percentages. Yeah. 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 Move to approve the FY25 salary schedules as presented. Second. 
All in favor? And then, oh. oh, no, I was just going to say after we approve it, can we post it so everybody can see? Or? Yeah. yeah. If it's, or yeah, or yeah. You know, push it out to it our staff. It should be on the website. Yeah. It'll it, on if the it's website. approved, yeah. then it's, yeah. yeah. Then it's okay. But yeah, if, if you we'll post just something. We'll changes and get that all presentable, yeah. and then we'll push it out. Or yeah. if anybody wants to just take a screenshot, and yeah. throw it on Facebook yeah. right now. I'm just uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of information. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess if, if you put huge ghost letters over it when it says proposed, then, <laughs> you know, then that would keep somebody from, you know, screenshotting and say, no, this is, this was online. This is what you're paying me. <laughs> so we got a first and a second. All right. Yep. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's for dinner. Okay. All right. So now we're going to talk about uh, moving to the unfinished business section of uh, continuing technology in the classroom discussion. So uh, we continue to have that discussion. We've uh, broken it out in, in K through four specifically. That's been our, our uh, target group that we've spoken about. The principals through their uh, leadership process have spoken with their staff, gotten feedback from their staff about um, what they use technology for when they use it um, based on what their staff has told them at each grade level. Then we all got together, the principals brought in what this is what you know, my staff said this for my kindergarten group, my first grade group said this, second grade, third grade. We got the, um, the basically the four elementaries that, that worked through that together and, and looked at, and then they um, kind of compiled that and said it may be a little bit different in each building. There wasn't a whole lot of difference. And then they said this is what we feel comfortable with moving forward. So they have uh, suggested this. And again, this has been shared with the board during work session. But um, just so I, I can read that out to you now. It, suggested here um, kindergarten would be 45 minutes and this is daily usage expectations for technology 45 minutes for kindergarten 45 minutes at first grade 60 minutes at second grade uh, 90 minutes at third grade and 90 minutes at fourth grade. so you, um, that's something you can consider in um, this doesn't necessarily take a motion um, it's Just not necessarily going to be adopted as policy or procedure. It's going to be more of an expectation that we would communicate out, and then we would continue to look um, periodically at our usage amounts. Um, uh, but it's open for discussion at, at and this I, point. Uh, just clarification, uh, this is basically uh, a recommended expectation like daily. per grade level, per yeah. day. Uh, this is not actual usage because when we actually no. when we actually got the actual data from the tech department of how much they were using it was considerably less than well, on that particular day for instance I think kindergarten across the district was 12 minutes um, so but, but if you're doing now testing going, it'll be well there will be that's... days when they have to take a, a state level reading assessment which is required by statute that we have to take for uh, kindergarten and the, and the lower grade levels so we're going to have to take that two times a year, specifically if you just take full kindergarten out, two times a year we're going to have to take that um, state level assessment as part of one of the four approved online uh, providers that do that. So they're going to be on them a little bit longer when they take those. Uh, when it gets to the third and fourth grade, for instance, when we get to map testing and some of that, it's going to be longer. We do have some district level assessments that we take to track student progress, um, uh, pre-progress and post. So there are going to be days and weeks maybe that they do a little uh, they, you know, but I think they feel like, and you principals can correct me if I'm wrong, I think they feel like these numbers, for the most part, may not on that particular day, but for the week, their average would be less than less than what these numbers are. One day might go above that, but you're obviously not going to test, you know, all five days in a week with the littles. You just, you're not going to get anywhere with that. That's not why. Did we ever figure out if there's a report that we can pull that we could be transparent with parents? You know, maybe like parent-teacher conferences, like your child on an average was on, you know, is on their device? I think, I think we can. Uh, I think we, we already, we, we could have that. Um, uh, there, there, there are some questions we have to sort out, like if they just stay logged in, you know, and we track that over time, and sometimes, uh, obviously, kindergartners may forget to log out, and it could be that they were logged in all day long, but necessarily they weren't even using that any time so there's some things there that we might have to clean up but I think overall yeah we could provide that information um, uh, and, and look at that in terms of this is a, a snapshot of basically what your kid um, you know does with that if that's something the board wants us to start 
start so. sharing or be available to a parent upon request I think would probably be the best Maybe way that to would be the best if a parent yeah. wants to see that then we could get that to them right away so they know what their child is being um, because I, I just feel that and, is, and I think, uh, that um, I mean yeah. I'm not saying it's going to be easy but that is is uh, very trackable I mean, it is very trackable. You can well, I mean, track when some you know, 4, other, the, other than other than four thousand kids, or, or yeah, even four hundred kids is a little bit yeah. of a challenge. But an individual, <coughs> I mean, that's see that. that that's an analytic, yeah. but but yeah. you can you, totally, yeah, but totally it's, it's, it's created anyway. It's just basically you know, exactly, and I think, uh, yeah, and it's unique to each individual login. You just have to. My phone does it every week. Yeah, probably just a reminder too. Like when we when we met in previous board meetings and work sessions, and we talked about this. You know, we did all come to the conclusion that sometimes what a six-year-old is telling you about what's going on in the classroom is not exactly what's going on. You know, they, they, they don't get a time reference very good. So if a parent's being told, I'm on a computer all the time, well, does that mean when the kid's looking at the screen for something, does that mean when they're... Well, that's you know, what I mean. Just so to, so like, if that parent wonders, be, my kid tells me they're right. on the computer all the time, well, come in, we'll run the numbers and say, to, no, this is yeah. what your kid is doing on average. They're this much time on their computer. So, again, um, if we're following these expectations, I think most of our parents would understand those minutes. Um, if they feel like they're more than that minutes, then, then I think they could have that ability to come in and say, hey, can you run that for me and see where my kid is at? Um, and with questions about that and how we communicate that to parents and how they know that's available is the other thing, um, to be transparent in that. So, uh, um, know that they're available to track that, whether that's when we first, uh, if we, if we Formally, the board were to adopt expectations like this. I think that would come with some language of what that means, and then communicate out, communicate out to our community and our parents about that's what we're doing. And I think there's still some conversation yet to be had. I mean, even uh, as a central office team, you're seeing the unfiltered, you know, data here. This is not what the central office um, looked through and then gave you. This is strictly from our our, our building levels um, to you, just so you have that. I think it's there's more discussion about what that looks like moving forward and of course tracking that and looking at saying okay we're, was this a realistic expectation even considering what our teachers are asked to do um, uh, you know like um, uh, Shelly brought up something really good in work session about keyboarding you know keyboarding is one of those things that we, we keep hearing from our our um, TAC our teachers that keyboarding is lacking well is this a realistic number if you added keyboarding in as an expectation for third and fourth graders for instance or for second graders, would this be a realistic expectation? Because you're obviously going to have to be logged into something to practice keyboard if it's on a device. There you so, don't. Click, yeah. click, click. Let's turn it off. Sting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can I ask? You couldn't even find five of those, let alone 400 of them. <laughs> Can I no. just ask if it was, uh, if, if it's okay with principals? Was that an uncomfortable discussion with teachers? Was it a comfortable discussion? Um, what was the impact or, or So they didn't really perceive it as just, yeah, just, information seeking. They saw it more as they're not catching you. Often, that often, um, the days that I may see it, and we can talk about it, but it's a rainy day and we can't get outside, and they have a choice between reading a book or or getting online and hearing like the book read to them, kind of like what we used to have with the tape cassettes in the day, you would read to it. Now it's like that on the computer. Um, sometimes our little ones forget to close the laptop. And so now I've got teachers worried about, oh my gosh, I didn't get that, I didn't get that shut. And I don't want my time to look like it's too much. I just don't want them worried about that, you know. I and, had to, uh, after the last meeting when we invited teachers in, we said, this is, uh, I got you, Mama, we, we are information seeking. That did soften the conversation. <coughs> I think 
having these conversations and working with like Sheena Self and our technology department and, and establishing, reestablishing clear criteria for why and when it's used. Um, these numbers are based off of if the stars align and I use all of my digital resources all on the same day, what is the maximum number that I think I would have in core classes? So not, not special so much as core. Um, with a little safety net built in in case. And so it's, it's a highly unlikely we ever get to these numbers probably, um, but it would be possible. And, and like in, in fourth grade, I've got some teachers that share students, and so they might be on a computer with this teacher over here and then switch teachers and be on a computer with this teacher over here, but they're not even the same teacher. But for the most part, I, I would say we had to have some, uh, some harder conversations to say, this is an I got you. This is what do you, they're wanting your input. What's a reasonable amount of time? And I agree, I think these are probably slightly elevated for what on average we would use. It did really help in the one board meeting when we talked about how the teachers felt the numbers were so high and you guys said, actually, we thought they were really low and that helped to alleviate some of the anxiousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's misperception that. is That was what not this, that was the actual usage number. Right. Yeah. right, not not these numbers we saw. Yeah. We had yeah. here. Yeah. That was the actual that usage numbers when we, we pulled that raw yeah. data and said this is how much they use it on this given day. I mean, I think most of us felt like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's not the, maybe the larger numbers that we might have expected to see. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but I think that even it, I did hear that from teachers that they thought, oh my gosh, that was way too much. Mm -hmm. And some of those buildings, I, I don't, I don't I think, think we, we didn't like hear that much. But, yeah. While I do understand that fear, I feel like I have to reiterate again, we're not accusing them of anything. We just, we aren't there. We aren't in the classroom. You know, we, one of us has actually certification to teach. The rest of us don't. So we don't know. I mean, the, the, the reason why we're asking them uh, to do this is because we want their feedback. I mean, we, we want to know what they think. We want to know what they recommend. You know, we want to know. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's not because we're not accusing them of of doing anything. We just yeah, no one's they're the experts. So and I think to clarify, make perceptions closer to reality. As I think, you know, perceptions can be as as we saw the numbers were smaller. Mm -hmm. People can have total misperception of. What is real? Yeah, I, mean, I think most of us are just looking for a healthy balance. I yeah. think it's just because yeah. yeah, yeah, it's in... a conversation that we've never had. I yeah. mean, it's just we've thrown it all out there, and then it's like, whoa, there were times that it was significant. Yeah, it had to be it had to be in 2020 yeah. and times after. Yeah, it had to be even yeah. before that. Before that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had some really significant numbers because that was an expectation of. Yeah, and, Teacher, and I mean, our teachers were pushing back then, like you're requiring me to be on a computer way too much. I don't have time yeah. to do the one-on-one, -on -one, face to face yep. working with my kids at that point. So now we're we're gonna so okay. So it's not a gotcha. Problem? It's just yeah. a hard yeah. conversation yeah, that has is. to be had and, in and order as, for it to be you know us to all be transparent. And yeah, and, and asking know what's them going on. to do yeah. this is just kind of our way of including them in the conversation. So like, like I said, I, I do understand. You know. That you know, that their their fear that we're going to come after them and, and no, we just want to know. Just, but that's yeah, that's absolutely to. not the case. We just we actually value their input because. Well, I think it helps with that conversation with parents too as well. It just it kind of opens it up and sets like you said expectations. Cause oh yeah, I'm pretty sure Adam doesn't have someone sitting down there monitoring this <laughs> with a little red light going <laughs> on. <laughs> 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 hey, we. Uh, we uh, a red light. Too, many, too much going on for that, but, but yeah. uh, we can get it if needed. We can get it. You know, that's something we're asking yeah. for. We can get it, but we're not going to uh, spend our time doing that every Thank day. You. I don't Thank feel you. like we have the reputation yeah. that we're just going after people. So. No, no. Oh, we just uh, want what's best now, for our students. It would be really cool if once they hit a certain time limit, the screen went red and said, <laughs> "Warning." <laughs> 
You were about to exceed your allotted time. If, if computer is not <laughs> shut down in five you, seconds, you it will explode. Yeah, we need to do that with our phone. <laughs> True. That is a good idea. Ooh, that, that got Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Lexi? <laughs> so you don't need a motion with that. Just uh, let me. Yeah. Well, thank them for doing all the effort and everything for yeah. us. That's yeah. that's all it is. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, so move on to uh, we're going to approve a couple of MSBA 2023 deed policy updates. Yeah. So these are policies that we've looked at probably back in January, and then we've had some policy committees where Ms. Creed and myself have kind of sit down and went through this. Really, it's it's centered around a couple of things. So these are the policies, and not so much the regulations in terms of the uh, administrative procedures. These are just the overall policies. We're still going to be working through how does that look to make sure we're matching up with those policies, primarily because there's a lot to deal with discipline and drug testing and um, uh, the other part of this is artificial intelligence, right, and, and how that works into plagiarism and different things. And so though we're not ready to kind of dive into that side of it within our um, administrative procedures, we do uh, feel like we've got some great things here within terms of changes in legislation about um, recreational marijuana prior, primarily and kind of putting those parameters not only on our the employees but also the students and, and the usage of some of those things because it's accept, accessible doesn't mean it's acceptable here at the school and so these outlines just some of those changes. For instance, if you have a, uh, a legal marijuana medication card you're still not going to be able to do that on school property, right? If you need to find some way to access that, you have to go off property. You cannot be under the influence of that while on property, whether a student or an employee. And so that kind of just highlights that. A lot of it, you'll see that within those policies when you look at it. It's really, those are the changes that it states. So we're talking about drug-free workplace, alcohol and drug testing. Again, the alcohol and drug testing uh, within our employees, if you are a Basically, it's a MoDOT. If you're a driver, if you're one of our transportation, you're, you're already part of that program. Uh, if you're an employee, unless we have reasonable suspicion that you're currently under the influ influence, or if you've had a workplace incident, accident, um, we're not just going to go start randomly drug testing people. And so those are just highlighting that because of those changes in legislation. Uh, student alcohol and drug usage, again, we've talked about it a little bit. Uh, even if you have that medical card, it's still not acceptable. You know, if you if you need to go off campus, if you need to administer that, whether it be your parent or your medical provider, you need to go off campus and do that. Uh, student alcohol and drug testing, um, we already have that in place where we do that for our extracurriculars, for our student parking. Uh, this is just how outlining that a little bit because of that change in legislation, right? Uh, searches of students, again, it's just encompassing that recreational usage and those pieces. Uh, there's also some places on that about, uh, you'll see we scratched it because that was one of the things that as a committee we said, hey, those oils and those fragrances and those things, you know, those um, essential, oils. essential oils. Essential oils, thank you. That's a great great point of clarity. Um, you know, that's some things that are calming, that not so much. And so we're, we're going to say, okay, we're already using that, never seeing some benefits of that. We're not talking about illegal marijuana. We just want to make sure that we're not trying to get somebody that's trying to have a soothing environment for their, for their students. Um, and then also visitors to district property and events, hey, you can't be under the influence. Even if, you, if it's legal, you can't do it. And so it really highlights that. When we talk about the artificial in, um, intelligence or that AI, um, it's really that, hey, this, is, this can be a useful tool, but it can also be plagiarism. And so we're not going to get into the, the administrative procedures until we kind of work with our teachers and our building principals and what that looks like. But at least we want to acknowledge that, hey, this is not necessarily original work. And so we want to make sure that we're putting that out there in policy as we're working through our, our handbooks and our procedures in place. So, uh, like I said, we've looked at this since January. This has already been read through the board once. We've kind of fine-toothed it a little bit, still wanting the input on the procedural side of it. But as far as policy, it'll match up um, with legislation. Is the AI one on here? Uh, I, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think I we pulled that one. For next that one. month. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I've read through them. Um, I have no issue with any of them, with the exception of all the ones that start with JF. Um, MSBA has no clue what the Fourth Amendment is, and I'm pretty convinced that they not only want to get us sued, 
but they may want some of our employees to get arrested. So uh, we need to work on those. But other than that, I'm okay with everything. Now, the one that I have always been concerned about is the, um, the random drug testing with first, second, third offense. I didn't see it in here, but I thought the policy was that parents aren't contacted about a failing test. Until they are contacted. They are uh, or not. So if you have a non, yeah. okay. they are, they no, are, I'm, yes. I, okay, that's what I would prefer. So and, and it, it, does, it talks about a non-negative test, not so much of a failing test, because then it goes through a medical uh, provider and they go through and they talk to the parents about their prescriptions that the kids might be on, or, or I should say students might be on, and then they kind of verify. So it, they're contacted on the non-negative. Again, it's not a failing test, it's not a positive test, it's, hey, there's some things here that we need to verify before we call it either a positive test or that you failed a drug test. Okay. And so there's some steps in, involved in that. Yeah, I, I think parents should be notified. Yes. Right yeah. away. Yeah. 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 But other than non-negative, are they contacted? No. We will contact and say, usually send a letter and say, hey, your, your student was a participant in their random drug test because of their activities. And the students have to sign up and parents have to sign up that they're yeah. understanding. But yeah. the, are the parents notified if it's positive or negative? They're only notified that they're being no, they've they, been tested. They only yeah. they, they're, they're notified, notified that they were testing. tested. They get notified if it's a non-negative for verification purposes. I'm and sure then, if it's a positive, they've been told. And then if it's a positive, then that's where the consequences will come into play, and so then they will be contacted. They'll be in the loop. Yeah. So we want to pull the JF ones? Is that what we want to do? I, I would like to. I need to. I, I have. I, I was going, when I read over them before tonight, I was like, oh, I can just make a couple of suggestions, you know, little tweaks here and there. And then I got to reading the rest of them like, yeah, not even close. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> that's fine. Yes, sir. Uh, there's, and the issue, a lot of the issue is uh, we can legally randomly test students, particularly because them and the parents agreed to it for parking and extracurriculars, mm -hmm. but we cannot legally randomly test students or even reasonably suspicion test students for disciplinary reasons. It doesn't say that, does it? Yeah, it does. It does. It says if you have a reasonable suspicion that a student it has been using or is under the influence, we can test them. They, nope. <laughs> Not without the parent saying yes, test my kid. Okay, we'll pull so, that and kind of look at that closer. But yeah, like I said, so it's... Uh, and that's not in the parent handbook or anything like that that they're going to agree to. Or yeah, and you know, like I said, it's. it's yeah, so uh, when you do the same. If you're talking about, you know, uh, extracurriculars, MISHA, you know, privileges like parking on school grounds, privileges. things like that. Yep. Safety concerns. Yeah, because you agreed that this is a privilege and, you know, I consent to uh, random testing to continue this privilege. But as far as uh, disciplinary action, that that's that's begging to get sued. Even with it being on a school property, school grounds. Uh huh. Yep. Can Officer Williams? Can you arrest somebody for being nope. stoned? Nope. There you go. It's not illegal to be under the influence unless you're doing certain activities that make it dangerous. Possession by consumption of alcohol is not a possession by consumption of, of drugs. Mm -hmm. Physically have yep. have it in their hand. Which and again, you know, if, if you're wanting to test them because you found it on them, finding it on them is enough for discipline. But uh, so that that that's really my big hang up is that they don't differentiate. So it, it basically says, and you know, if a staff member has reasonable suspicion, but they may be under the influence, that's not enough. Unfortunately, can we make those changes or can you yeah, go to Ed Council about it? Move to approve the policies as, presumed, <laughs> as proposed, excluding JFCH, comma, JFCI, comma, JFG. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good catch. All right. Board wrap up. 
So we'll wrap up. Hey, you know, it's April and May, so we're going to be child. busy. So we can look at that list up there. TAC is moved. Obviously, they didn't have its day. A little busy today. But they're going to do May 9th. And then uh, we got Troy, Eric, and Jacob on the, the Blair Grant Committee. And approved. I think everyone, it's everyone. all approved. Everybody gets that money because we had a request that uh, Thanks, sir. the amount of funds exceeded the request. No uh, we've also got uh, one of the uh, best nights in the Camden School calendar, which is the Education Foundation Elegant Evening, April 19th, 530 at the high school. It's going to be amazing. You're watching online. There are a few that. spots left. There are very, there are a few spots left. It, <laughs> if you are out there uh, watching online, there are a limited number of seating this year because we've had high level of interest. They do such a great job with that. So if you're wanting to go, get that information to Linda Loop as soon as possible uh, here at the two of them are, have so already been claimed. Two spots are already filled. So like, I just, I just like haven't gotten them yet. Yeah. <laughs> There's a link on the website as well. Special Eric would be out there scalping tickets too. <laughs> yeah. Eric scalping tickets. We are going to have a uh, school board dunking booth there. <laughs> For all yeah. Yeah. superintendents. So, edge, uh, so then we got a special board <laughs> meeting. You got that. You can read that there. Educator of the year. One change on that. That's at Old Kinderhook. They've been really good partners with us, so we've moved out to Old Kinderhook, and it's going to be really, really nice. Uh, Dr. Piper and Sharon Arnold have been working really hard on that to get that lined out. Um, volunteer Appreciation Dinner, that's May 9th, and that'll be at the high school. Um, uh, RSVP for those things, please. Um, graduation, kind of a big deal. It's May 16th, that's a Thursday, 7 p.m. at Bob Shore Stadium. Weather Weather's Weather weather's going to be awesome. And uh, this year, I think Dr. Price is on weather. I had weather last year. <laughs> I think it went really well. Um, Dr. Price is on weather this year, so we'll see if he can continue the good tradition uh, that we started last year. Um, end of the year celebration, CHS, uh, that breakfast. You remember we talked about that? It's a pretty quick one. It's great for you guys to be there if you can. Breakfast, 8.30, assembly at 9.30, out of there by 10.15-ish. Normally, um, maybe a little bit longer with some of the recognition we'll do this year with the retirees. Could be a little bit uh, longer in there. So, any questions about any of that? We got required new board member training. Gotcha. Uh, MSBA or mayor, you can use either one of those. Both those organizations provide that. Are we going to have a meeting on 23rd? Do we? 23rd is when we need to have that meeting for uh, the cl uh, classified staff approvals and then any, also any hirings that we. Might want to get that and that's down morning, seven thirty. That is morning, seven. 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 Oh. seven. What? What day is it? Twenty-third. Tuesday. Twenty-third. Tuesday the twenty-third. Tuesday. Tuesday. Seven a.m. Tuesday. Eight a.m. All right. It is a Tuesday. Oh, beautiful. And uh, as let's well, John Holt had a college visit tonight. Our student advisor John, he couldn't be here tonight because he got a college visit. Oh sure. Gosh, the um, drone team did great. They, they, they just, they just. I mean, that the junior RTC just exceeds their own. They set such a high level of performance, and they just exceed it every year. Uh, it just does really? an amazing job. We're, we're, and Lexi will also tell you that robotics. Give them a quick robotics update. Um, we won Impact at one of our regionals. It's the most prestigious award in first, so we won that. That was pretty great. We were. Top six out of 600 teams last year. Um, so we were able to qualify for Worlds. And we're leaving for Worlds Monday. And we'll be Is that driving in over Houston, Houston, Texas. Houston, Houston Texas. Everything's and bigger in Texas, including the robotics competitions. Yeah. It's a big yeah. deal. It's going to be great. Six, 600 yep. schools represented, right? Yep, 600 teams are there. That is only, that's only high school teams. That doesn't include, like, the middle school. We have 44 teams in our district. So... I think we have an FLL team going as well, which is really exciting. We get a few littles in there. Futures, yeah. The yeah, we we'll call them little lasers. So that's fine. So, yeah. Yep. Super exciting. Congratulations. Good job. Awesome. Outstanding. She's a rock star, by the way. <laughs> and if you didn't know what impact is, impact is where they're basically their team. It's how they impact uh, and improve the world around them, basically, through um, their project. So they've partnered with... Um, yep. Orphanages in Africa, yeah. and and provided them with some STEM training and some connection with our kids to give them some basically tutoring and encouragement. And just awesome what they do. Great stuff. Yeah, we do 
do stuff in the community as well. We've donated over a thousand bouquets to our nursing homes, and we like to make connections with them, like personal connections. We started during COVID when they didn't really have a lot of connections, like in person. So, and then we also donate to the cancer center. Um, we specifically do the children's cancer center. We repurpose our Legos and make like tiny like Lego challenge cards, and then they're able to build it, post it on Facebook, Instagram. And then we're able to like see what everyone else is building. So yeah, oh, that's neat. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, they do cool. Cool. Awesome. Good. So that's all I got. Before we wrap up. Cool. Well, motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Michael. Yes. That's an aye. It's an aye. 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 <laughs> that's okay. Aye for me. Aye. 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 All right. We're in executive session. Thank you, everybody. Hey, they're not. They're not hazing you or anything. No. Those chairs all do that. <laughs> no, it's fine. They didn't like give you the bad chair that sinks. They all sink. Jacob has to fix my memory. Yeah. But they just, and even if it's just normal, they'll sink over the top. Okay. And I think I have everything laid in as far as officers. Oh, okay. Here's a new board member. Let's hazing.